giraffe print trunks with gold and this has always been a fighter's town fighting out of las vegas nevada by way of believe me i've lived it putting your body on the line for the spectacle because you can't live any other way success here isn't given it's sacrificed for it Given everything you have, to hear them chant your name. It can all be gone in a blink. Oh, trouble. He collapsed over the big crash happening. Whether you step in the arena for combat or on a chair going 185. You're a gladiator, all one and the same. And there's no bigger arena in the world. Who's it going to be? by way of knockout. Live from Las Vegas, it's race day on Fox, and there is the hottest driver in the sport, Las Vegas' own Kyle Busch. Outstanding weather for the third race of the season. This show, don't blink, you'll miss it. 180 miles per hour in the desert of Nevada. We're about 20 miles from the Raiders' home stadium, Allegiant Stadium. That's where the next Super Bowl will be played. We got a big race today from Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Now, the wind is kicking up. I'm worried about my hair and Danica's. Clint, he's not concerned, but that is worrying <laughs> us. The drivers have enough to worry about as race day is brought to you by Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. And we thank Caleb Plant for appearing in the opening of our show. Catch his upcoming Showtime pay-per-view event, March 20th. 25th against David Benavides. That's a good fight over on Showtime. And a good show here as we are backstage where the drivers are getting ready to be introduced to the crowd and another great crowd here in uh, Las Vegas. So, right, it's great to be in Vegas. a fun time, but the drivers have some uh, some serious work to do. I think everybody's got some gambling to do right here in Vegas. I think it's <laughs> racetracks throwing for a loop. You heard about the wind. Look at Myers' hair. This wind's all over the place. It's blowing hard, first and foremost. But let me tell you, gusts are a problem. As you pick up that gust 180 mile an hour in one of these race cars, she's going somewhere. Where that is, I don't know. You said 100 mile, 180 miles an hour, and I was thinking for a second, it's pretty much like the wind right now. <laughs> and we saw this yesterday in qualifying. As soon as the wind kicked up from one driver to the next, it dropped off many tents. They couldn't keep it down in three and four. So the wind's definitely going to play an element. And they said the gusts are the worst thing. Um, and strategy is. Strategy is always going to play a big role, I think, especially today. Track position's important. Are they going to pit a couple laps early? Are they not? We'll have to see. Nice of you to suggest a ponytail for me. I tried it. It, it, it didn't work. Right. You know, I said <laughs> Let's see what's on the lead lap, what's on your mind, the hot topics. And you saw Kyle Busch. I, I mean, the last two years, one win at each year, he's already won for Richard Childress Racing coming off of Fontana. Then here he came, won the truck race here in Vegas Friday, ended up fourth when he raced Xfinity, so triple work for him. And the story of the weekend on Friday, Chase Elliott snowboarding, and he suffered a fractured tibia, underwent three hours of surgery. And getting word, I actually spoke with Rick Hendrick of Hendrick Motorsports this morning, and he said he, uh, that uh, Chase Elliott's spirits are good. He is home from the hospital. He's been released. He'll he'll go to physical therapy tomorrow. Wow. And he and Rick Hendrick are going to sit on the couch and watch the race today and see how Josh Berry does, who's stepping in into that nine car. Well, first and foremost, the fact that he's safe and okay, right? In a good place, had a good surgery, successful. Everything's pointing in the right direction. All right, now what does that do for the impact of the sport? Right. This is our most popular driver, one of the biggest names out Champion. there that is not in there. Champion of the sport 2020. But that being said, I love the fact that look at Josh Berry. Look at the opportunity. We always say this. Who's going to fill his shoes? There's a four car looking for a driver out there. There's several other cars. Oh, these drivers are getting a little long in a tooth. Might be looking. An opportunity. Hear about Dale Jr. telling everybody all the time. This Josh Berry's ready for it. He's ready for it. Well, guess what? We're fixing to find out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Josh Berry's got a big job at hand because number one, he can't crash because he's probably going to lose this opportunity. But he also can't perform poorly because he could lose this 
this opportunity. So he's in a real tight squeeze. So he's just really got to stay calm, stay focused, not make mistakes. But really, you know, he does need to impress, I think, because this seat's going to be open for a little while. Yeah. Three hours surgery, you can't tell me that he's going to be back in four weeks after a three hour surgery. So there's going to be some time where he can fill this seat if he does it right today. Yeah, Rick Hedrick said he changed his tune a little bit. Nothing written in the language about what a driver does at his off time. Said you can't live in a bubble. He just hopes the drivers, especially in season, are smart and careful about what they do because we know their driver mentality. Your thought on this? You guys both were in this profession. Look, I mean, risk and reward. I There was a lot of things that I didn't do while I was still driving because I thought when I'm done, I can do it. I understand the whole argument of live your life, but, um, you know, it's probably not something I would have done. I didn't. I didn't ski until afterwards. Um, so, you know, I, I think I think it's a I think it's too risky to be to be honest. I'm on that fence. Here's the end of the day. We've heard, why are we telling you? We've heard a lot of drivers. I've read their tweets, their replies. I've heard from Denny Hamlin. You got to live. You got to stay sane. This schedule is a grinding schedule. It's very, very long. You also have to stay fit, both physically and mentally. How do you do that? You got to get out and you have to live. Right. And this is something that Chase Elliott's done since he was a little kid. This isn't something like you're stepping out of bounds into something extreme. You never know what you're doing. I feel like for him, he was careful. You know, he chose that. He knew what he needed to do to stay fit and stay mentally healthy. This is something he was comfortable with, and unfortunately, he got bit. It won't be the end of the day for him or his team. It'll be several weeks. It just history shows Kyle Busch 2015. It was a different kind of injury, but he missed 11 races. Tony Stewart back in 2013, yeah. he missed 15 races with a very similar type of injury. We're just getting started. Bryce Harper is here from the Phillies to give the command. We'll talk more about Kyle Busch and talk live with some of the drivers as they get introduced. Here's what's coming up live on Fox when we continue. Vegas can be a dicey place, but we like a little risky business around here. And race day is letting it roll. Living in the limelight is not for everyone. But as the son of two-time cup champion Kyle Busch, Braxton Busch might have been born for it. We'll take a closer look at this racing family and how they've already cashed out on this weekend. Then we'll catch up with the king of our hearts, Michael Waldron, as he spreads the love during his Vegas grid walk. All bets are off as we get ready to go green. Fox Race Day continuing live here. We're on the scene at Las Vegas Motor Speedway, and that is Las Vegas native Noah Gregson, rookie in the Cup Series, starting at the back of the field, influenced by Kyle Busch of the Busch brothers and many others. He would be a long shot if you want to try and win some of uh, Clint's money here. Tell us about the Super Six and what are you thinking, Clint? And all you got to do is get on that app. That app is Fox Bet Super Six. Come and get you some. There's $10,000 on the line. Answer some six simple questions. Questions, right? Is Joey Logano going to be fast? I guarantee you that's an easy one, but they're not going to be that easy. Get on that app, have some fun, and come get my money. And Joey Logano, the pole sitter, is was is with us and the defending champion. How about, by the way, uh, other than you, right? If you were a Santa, who's the driver to beat? Can you give us one or two today? Oh, uh, there's a few. I, the Hendrick Chevys did look pretty decent. We got to look out for them a little bit, but I think the Mustangs are probably a little faster as usual uh, today. And uh, the Pencil one looks good. Blaney looks good as well. Too don't look bad either so <laughs> we're in good shape you know i'm gonna pick those ones anyways but i feel like we're in good shape yeah but you are always fast here you're really good here what is it what is it about this track um, it takes a little bit of everything right there's never one thing yeah you're right the loud pedal is definitely what it takes for sure it takes big power takes good aerodynamics for sure and getting the, the platform of the car right but you got those big bumps you got to get over too so trying to get everything working together is challenging and strategy can be a big play today as well Man, I, I think that's a strategy. You've already fixed one problem, right? Starting up front, keeping them in the rear view mirror. How do you do that? Do you block? Block is going to be a little bit of a game, name of the game here, right? Yeah, I mean, securing the clean air is, is big, right? Yeah. And, and so trying to stay up there, the first pit stall will help that as well. I do think there's five or six cars that are under a blanket that are all really solid. We've proven to have some good short run speed in the beginning of practice and in qualifying, so that should help us stay up there, hopefully to start, and hopefully we got good balance at the long haul. That's a big piece. Where's this race 
won and lost? Is it strategy? Is it pure out speed? Is it being able to get over the bumps? Is it dealing with the wind? Where is it won and lost today? It's going to be in the details, for sure. It's going to be definitely be in the details. Like, like I said, there's six cars that are all the same speed. How are you going to pass them? It's going to be the details. Restarts, strategy, pit road. That's going to be the difference. You don't have to pass them. Thanks, Joey. You don't have to pass I anybody. Stay in front of them, right? You just I stay right where you're at. Right. That's right. <laughs> easy, Good easy. luck, man. Good luck to you. All right. Thanks for coming by, as always, uh, Joey Logano. We have a, we're backstage here. I'll hold that for you until we get uh, the next driver. I think we were talking to Bubba Wallace a moment ago. Bubba had to go. He's getting interviewed or introduced. They're, it's race time, man. That's what I'm excited about. I'm excited about all these opportunities. A lot of storylines. Yeah, bring him down. These guys are all over the place. You hear him. You hear his, his uh, you know, where his focus is and trying to keep the, the, the pace. You know, pace is such a hard thing. Pace comes with where you're at. Up front, you're running a way better pace than you are mired back in traffic. Oh, really I agree. With, I, I agree. That, I mean, he just, you know. Speaking you think, of which, he already got interviewed just, or introduced. You know what that means? What? You need to qualify just a little bit better. Hey, I had a huh? yesterday. Uh, that was scary. You didn't get, it scared me. Scared you? <laughs> scared me just a little bit. No, but it is nice to see. Did you try to go flat out? I, I, was, I was committed, but until I wasn't. <laughs> that baby got up from underneath of me, but you gathered it up. You know, that was experience, Myers, and exactly. I said it in a booth. That's Big exactly time experience thing. Exactly. Hey, hey, you, or sheer luck. Or sheer luck. <laughs> you got both. Hey, it's great. You know, Vegas brings people from all over for the race, and I've heard fans talk about, hey, we wanted, they came from a, a different country, actually, part of the goodbye tour for Kevin Harvick. They've been great fans this, from Great Britain, I think they said. And that's yeah. kind of a cool thing it to see. It is cool, and, and I think I've seen them uh, they, they've been in the garage so it's it's fun to be able to see the fans come to the racetrack and that's really why we're doing everything that we're doing this year to try to engage the fans and do what we have to do to, to not only race on the racetrack but have a good time outside of the race car and this is a good scene right I mean every time you come to the track but the fans here really yeah. especially the stage and the atmosphere it's a great scene for everything but your hair <laughs> he, what wow. do you notice too? Fitting, he's fitting right in with the Fox By the team. Way, I love I it. I can't wait till you get in the booth, eh? He might have the same <laughs> issues going on. Yeah, we might. I, talk, yeah. I got, I got plenty of resources. Of, <laughs> mine's lack of hair. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll ask Joey Legato for help with that. All right, have let's a go. good day. All right, thanks. Good luck, Kevin. Thanks luck. for dropping by. All right, let's, let's head back to Shannon. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Chris. We're here in the race day studios, and Vegas is always the opportunity for our race day roulette. America's crew chief, Larry McReynolds, Daytona 500 champ, Jamie McMurray. Let's spin the roulette wheel, guys, and let's see who it lands on when it lands on a face. You tell me what you're expecting out of them today. Uh, I mean, this is always the first. best part of the show, isn't it? This and Chris Meyer's hair, of course. <laughs> Tyler, Tyler Reddick. Reddick. Well, when we come to Vegas, you think about luck, and Tyler Reddick has had zero luck so far this year. Uh, best finish of 34th. He's going to start 34th today because when they got to Las Vegas, they found a problem with his engine, so no practice or qualifying. The guy, you're going to give him a hug, right? If you were yeah, out there, you'd just, give him a just hug, give Tyler Reddick. Come here and give Larry Mack a hug. Who is next on the roulette wheel? Let's Speaking talk about of yeah, bad Harrison luck, Burton. Harrison Burton. In his second full season in Cup Series. Lap 11 of practice yesterday. Mm -hmm. He gets in his water out of his race car. Had to go to a backup car. Going to have to put his work clothes You're on. You're ready to spin, Jamie? It's I, already you spinning, time Shannon. Roulette? I'm pretty I mean, fast Are you a roulette Shannon. guy? I don't know. Uh, no um, roulette for me. I don't gamble, no, Shannon. No, no gambling. Uh, I do like Alex Bowman today. I think this is a good bet. New crew chief this year with Blake Harris. They finished in the top 10 both at Fontana and at Daytona. They were fast at the clash. I think they've got it going on. I think they're going to be a threat for the win today. That's all we got for you guys of roulette wheel here in the race day studios but we do have more coming up on race day brexton bush uh, might be giving his dad kyle and kurt a run for their money as kyle's seven-year-old son gets behind the wheel and lays down a few laps at the las vegas bull ring it's as oh how cute is that yes, we'll be right back is the is the side show what may be the final super speedway NASCAR race ever in Southern California. Kyle Busch is up to 13. Kyle Busch takes the lead. There's one more set of corners. The first Kyle event. Busch can coast it home from here. He's back. Woo! Welcome to RCR, baby. Bush Brothers synonymous with success in NASCAR coming from Las Vegas. Siblings 
in sports across the board, not just NASCARs, they're the most successful race team together. Travis and Jason Kelsey saw them play against each other in the Super Bowl. The Williams sisters, the success that they have enjoyed changed the sport. Reggie and Cheryl Miller, she got NBA, WNBA, professional men and women in basketball. And the DiMaggio brothers, all three of them, but we know Joe and, of course, Peyton Manning, Eli Manning. And if you want a funny guy in there, Cooper Manning, who's pretty successful as well. Kyle Busch comes in here on a roll with Brexton, who is a driver waiting to happen. Let's take a look at how they gathered at the Bull Ring. That's a local spot here where young drivers can make a name for themselves. You're going to be like your dad one day? Yeah. 17. You stand here in the middle of the bull ring, and I know you were a little guy watching your dad race, then you raced here. Now being here as a dad, like, what is this moment like? It's cool. I mean, it's just, you know, fun to continue to try different things and move on up the ladder and getting him into bigger race cars and going faster. You know, I mean, he's still young. He's still really young. How often is he racing in a year? Last year was, what, 68 races? I think 68. Wow. So, yeah, he runs a lot. Brexton Bush. Hit your right lines and keep the car straight. Don't focus on you. You do you. As soon as you I try not to put too much pressure on the kid. If he does everything that he's supposed to do and he looks like he does everything, you know, and tries, you know, if we don't win, like, no big deal. I try to be hard on him in a sense of just knowing about effort. Try to teach that word. You're not out here to just take the pole and go, bye bye, everybody. We got to pass. We got to learn how to pass. I got to learn how to pass. I want to start in the back of my race. I already know how to pass. You do? How do you get an eight year old to listen to you and do what he's supposed to? The, dad, the other dads ask me that all the time. They're like, how do you get your kid to listen to you? I'm like, I don't know. I guess he just listens because he knows what I've done, right? Yeah. He listens because he knows I know what I'm talking about. Kyle Bush wins California. Oh. Unbelievable. Huge win. When you get a win yourself, what's the reaction from Brexton? Now that he's understanding more yeah. what you do. It's good. Um, we want to win, right? I mean, that's that's what we go to the racetrack for every week. And so when I was able to win at California, unfortunately, the family wasn't there. I called him and FaceTimed him from Victory Lane. He asked me sometimes, you know, he's like, Dad, how come you're so slow? Or, hey, Dad, you are really fast. He gets it. He watches. He, he pays yeah. attention. I woke up this morning, turned on the news. First thing I saw, Brexton Bush is racing at the bull ring. Then you drive really? to the racetrack, and it's yeah. Brexton's picture, the yeah. bash. Okay. What is it, the Brexton bash? Yeah, I, think, or something? Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah, the bash at the bull ring. The, yes. What's the goal for this race? Just experience. Just to go somewhere else and, and see how he stacks up against other kids across the country. I went pretty good in the race today. It was about to be the hardest um, competition that I've ever had. Finish second. You did a great job. Come here. Go. Nice work. How neat is that? To be able to take your son back, Braxton Bush, back to where your dad, Tom, right, first raced and then took you and your brother, Kurt, and, and Kyle Bush, both champions of the sport. And then here's another generation to take your own son back to where your old stomping grounds were and to be able to race and compete. Um, I race against Kyle. I see them, you know, on a weekly basis out at Millbridge Speedway in North Carolina. And he's just a different guy out there. You know, we watch him race. I've raced against him. He ain't much fun to race against. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling you. And he's really he not very much yeah. fun to race against in the go-kart right. world. But together, it really is yeah. neat to see him be a father and just be a different person. And you've already noticed a, a, a different Kyle Bush this year. Even in that interview, he sounds, he's just like, even when he won last weekend, his interview afterwards, he just sounded more humble, yeah. kinder. He might wow. get a few less boos. That's the feeling <laughs> I get from it. But, you know, what I heard as well in that clip that we had from Jamie's interview is that he talked about focusing on the effort. And I really do think that that a fun fundamentally is a very, very good direction to go because instead of focusing on the wins, and let's face it, Kyle's got a lot of wins, so it'd be easy to focus on that. It's about the effort. I think that's an incredible discipline to give him. And look, we all talk about nature versus nurture. He 
think it's both. Talented <laughs> and entertaining is Kyle Busch and Brexton as well. Are you heading up to the broadcast we booth are, with Mike? Have fun calling the race. Got to be and a good one. Look, you have, you have yeah. there are fans that came to see you two, that? and hopefully they have a TV set and they're watching Fox as well throughout. Got to be on. I'm telling you, folks, this is shaping up to be a great one. Our Looking aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Goodyear more driven. An overview from Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Clint Danica, it was fun. Have fun up in the booth. And Can let's head now to plan? Michael Waltrip wandering on the gridwalk. Michael, where are you? Yeah. Hi, Chris. I'm right down here on pit road start finish line. Hey, Caitlin Vincy from Fox Sports is here today. Welcome, Caitlin. Hey, how are you? I'm having a good time. Thanks for being on the grid. Thank you. Yeah, it's great to be here as always. Thanks for all that you do. Here's Alex Bowman. Alex, you won here a year ago, West Coast guy. How are you feeling? Uh, feeling pretty good. I, we unloaded a little freer than I wanted to be, but uh, I feel like Blake and all the guys have made good changes, and, and we should have a pretty strong Alec Camaro. What about gambling? Have you won a lot of money? I have stayed away. I, I stayed here, didn't go to the strip, didn't lose anything. We're going to win a bunch this afternoon. Ooh, I like that plan. Denny Hamlin has got our driver's eyeball cam. Denny, this is awesome you're wearing that... Um, camera on your helmet thank you yes. yeah it's just uh i think it's a great perspective it's as close to the kit what i see is is possible i saw it in the trucks and, and xfinity so we're we're gonna carry the people for a ride today fedex on the camera here looks good let's see if we can say hi to bubba right quick hey just talk to your car owner he's wearing a real cool helmet he's wearing a cool helmet yeah it's got a camera on it oh mine's cooler uh, yeah, this is cool. Combi is on town. Hey, we're going to go to break, come back with all kinds of action here at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Totally. Yeah, let's do it. Let's go to break. All right, all right. Get your blinds in, everyone. This NASCAR offseason, the playing deck was shuffled more than we expected. Reddick and Kyle Busch have essentially swapped rides. Kyle Gibbs is going to be in that 54 car. And a couple teams bet big, trying to win the pot before even seeing the fly. Look at this race. He's going to be good what it should have. But maybe they weren't quite ready for the action. They had speed. They just weren't able to put the whole race together. Check. Check's good. Others like their hot hand and wanted to bet the house. Top five, top ten. Going to raise it. 100. All right. Kudos to them. They're building something That's good. That's a big bet. Sounds like you've hit the mark. I'm guessing pocket rackets. I mean, slicing and dicing. Yep. Which gets us to you. RCR. Something tells me you're all in. All in already. No way. You must love the hand you've been dealt. I thought about it, Jamie. I think this could be What's not to love? Two point races in. Hell yeah. Welcome to RCR, baby. One win. And one that just got away from you. He's back. It's early in the game, but boys, well, I think RCR might have the cards to back it up. Fold, fold, fold. Pot's yours, RCR. That A3 offsuit somehow is a winning combination. But let's see if you can stay hot. Race day live from the scene at Las Vegas Motor Speedway, presented by Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. Good to have you watching uh, this Sunday afternoon. It's been a fun weekend in Las Vegas. Joey Logano is on the pole for the Pennzoil 400. It's the third race of the NASCAR season. And now we take you trackside for a front row seat for opening ceremonies. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you please rise if you're able and remove your hats as the Nellis Air Force Base Honor Guard presents our nation's colors. And please remain standing as MRO Chaplain Billy Malden offers today's invocation. Gracious God and Heavenly Father, we just want to take a moment to recognize your presence in our lives. Father, we're ready to go racing today, and we want you to be with these drivers and teams, officials. Bless everybody with a safe day of racing. Fathers, we remember our country. We especially remember those both here at home and abroad that are protecting our freedom, as well as first responders everywhere. Be with them and be with their families. Lord, bless everybody with a great day, great memories. And Father, may your peace and your presence be with us all. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Here to perform our national anthem, please welcome world-famous singer, comedian, impressionist, and ventriloquist, Terry Fader. 
Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the home of the Think about this. No driver who led the first race in Las Vegas has ever gone on to win the race in 30 previous Vegas races. NASCAR Race Up, weeknights on FS1. In the middle of the quiet desert sits a four-mile strip where neon signs take center stage. Las Vegas is the best seat in the house. Millions of people come to be dazzled by the greatest entertainers of the world. Vegas holds all the cards. The power of Adele, the magic of Penn and Teller, and this weekend, the thrill of NASCAR. The sports brightest stars have been called to shine at the Diamond in the Desert. So come one, come all. And please, take your seat, because it's showtime, baby. And this is Las Vegas. Welcome to Las Vegas. It's the NASCAR Cup Series on Fox, presented by Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. High clouds, fast-flying Thunderbirds, and 36 NASCAR stock cars ready to race on this mile-and-a-half track. Hi, everybody. Mike Joy along with Danica Patrick, who scored the highest finish in any NASCAR touring series ever by a woman right here in an Xfinity Series on this date. Uh, pretty cool. And Clint Boyer. And here we go. Uh, we've seen <laughs> practice. We've seen qualifying. What are we going to see today? Gosh, you know, we were down there talking to a lot of drivers, and they all seemed very confident with their cars. They all had a lot, a lot of optimism for today, but of course, only one driver is going to win. So we saw the win play a huge element in qualifying yesterday, the huge drop off from one car to the next in those final 10 cars. So I think that uh, I think it's going to be interesting, but I also think that the fact that so many guys are so happy with their cars is indicative of the season that we're going to see, which is going to be a lot of different winners again. Interesting to say the least, folks. I'm talking Las Vegas. It doesn't get any better. It's time to push them cards to the table, put all the chips down and go for it. Joey, like on that Ford, that blue oval is bad fast yesterday in practice, but you said it, Danica. A lot of these drivers, this is the first real race track. These mile and a half tracks, that's is the bread and butter part of our series. These guys have to perform. If they leave here struggling, let me tell you something. It's going to be a long road ahead of them, but I don't think you're going to see that. Cool racetrack all over the racetrack. A little bit of bumps in one and two are going to play a role in this. I cannot wait to watch this thing go up. Well, that's what's so cool is this is really two different racetracks. Yeah. Each end is different. Very Big different. Big time because of those bumps. Wow. Three and four, very smooth. You can run anywhere on the track you want. Turn one, you got to be more line sensitive. Cars still pulling in, filling the parking lots here. Going to be a cool and windy day, but the fans are ready for the command. Let's go trackside. 
And now, race fans, for the most famous words in motorsports, please welcome Las Vegas native and two-time Major League Baseball National League MVP, Bryce Harper. Drivers, start your engines! It's a beautiful day north of Las Vegas where the fans of NASCAR have come to see their stars. 36 of them roll off here for 400 miles next on Fox. The Cup Series rolls into Vegas. It is a beautiful day in the Las Vegas desert where just anything, anything can happen. Out here, you can hit it big. And we're racing in Las Vegas. This is Las Vegas. You can't be afraid to gamble. Or go home empty-handed. Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. We're in the wall. Son of a We're done. Take this power to the house. Who will add up? Go, go, go. Always faster than these guys. Spin that wheel. Whoa! And lay it on the line. Ass. It's time to go all in. Who's it going to be? What a race car. Check <laughs> the flag right here, baby. Viva Las Vegas, baby. Yeah. It's the Pennzoil 400. The field rolls off the starting grid. We are ready to go here in Las Vegas. Here is your Coca-Cola Zero Sugar starting grid. In two rounds of time trials yesterday, Joey Logano, three-time Las Vegas winner who won here last fall, took down the pole in his Ford, William Byron Chevrolet, one of the top cars in practice, second. Ryan Blaney has led the last seven races here. Ty Gibbs, the rookie, has his best cup start ever. And then in row three, it's the Kyle and Kyle show. Bush won his record for a record 17th straight season last week, and Larson won this race two years ago. Let's go back one week. Fontana, California. Overcoming a speeding penalty and finding his way all the way through the field and to victory lane for a record 19th straight year. Besting Richard Petty and David Pearson. A first and second round ballot Hall of Famer. Pretty Kyle Bush, 19 years. Let's dial up old Kyle Bush. Hey, Kyle Bush, it's Boyer. Up in the booth, you got us? Yeah, buddy, what up? Man, you are red hot. Had to feel good to get that big win last week in Fontana. Randa Burnett getting everybody in this eight car in victory lane. Now you're right back at home in Las Vegas. Tell me about your car. Tell me about your week. Yeah, man, it's been great. It's been a lot of fun. A lot of cool things came from that California win. So real proud of this bunch and uh, happy to be with them where we were able to score that victory in California. So, um, you know, that Lucas Oil Camaro was fast, hoping that the Osco uniform Chevy is just as good. We'll, uh, we'll fight it out. Hi, right, buddy. Looking forward to watching you. You always put on a show. Thank you. And he does. Man, I'm telling you, I, I cannot wait to watch these guys struggle a little bit in practice. Cannot wait to see how they're going to have in this speed. Well, in the spirit of Las Vegas, you fans have a chance to win 10 grand of Clint's cash oh. for free today on Fox Bet Super 6. Simple and it's fun, just like Clint. Just download the free Super 6 app on your phone, enter your six predictions for today's race, and if all six of your picks are right, you could win big. Download the Fox Bet Super 6 and start playing for free. All right, let's hear from our pit reporters and crew chief, uh, beginning with Jamie Little. Good afternoon, Mike. Yes, Alex Bowman is the defending race winner here, and he considers Las Vegas one of his favorite tracks. And although he did miss the fall race here because of a concussion, he is picked up right where he left off. This race car in practice was good on the bottom, the middle, and the top, something not everybody in the field can say. He's trying to get his second win at Las Vegas, but his first with his new 
Crew Chief Blake Harris. Regan? Well, Jamie, it's been a very difficult start to Tyler Reddick's time at 2311 Racing. Two races, two DNFs so far, and it didn't get any better yesterday. An engine issue before practice started. They got no practice, no qualifying with that race car. He will have to start from the back. The team told me the goal today is to simply finish this race. All the laps get some data points on Tyler and what they need to do for the remainder of this season. This is a perfect track to do that at, though. Tyler riding a ten or in a three-race top ten streak at Las Vegas. Larry Mack. Yeah, Regan, a crew chief has a couple of challenges here today. One, keeping a good balance on that race car with every adjustment you make. You heard Joe Logano in the pre-race talk about strategy. That leads me to my Liberty Mutual race strategy. Depending on how the cautions fall, split the stages in half. Get that full thing about those four fresh tires. And in Las Vegas, we're rolling the dice. We're not afraid to gamble. If you run 10 or 12 laps on your tires, jump in there and get right side tires. The fuel window is about 58 to 62 laps. If you catch a caution and you can make it to the end of those stages, Mike, you jump in there and fill it up with fuel. But the bottom line is, that's my game plan. I get an untimely caution. I got to start over. <laughs> Thanks, Larry. <laughs> Don't burn up that calculator today. Well, since we're in Las Vegas, let's spin the wheel. Here are the winning car numbers from last year. And Joey Logano, of course, won here and won the championship. And let's spin it again. Starting at Daytona with the 47, Ricky Stenhouse. And moving on to California, and you know where this is going to land. Driver number eight, Kyle Busch. So... Where are you putting your chips today? <laughs> oh, buddy, this is a fun game to play. We're in the right state. I think I'm going with that polecat. Joey Logano was extremely fast. He said his Mustang was good. He was happy with it. 22 all the way. Danny. Gosh, good question. <clears throat> I mean, I, I think I put my money on Kyle Larson. He's really confident when we talk to him. Um, we know he's good here. We know he's an awesome driver, great team. I, I'm putting my money on Larson. Now, this is the one I like, long shots. Hey, we're here to gamble. You can't gamble without a long shot, making the money. I am going with the old man right there. Kevin Harvick is my guy. I think he's going to do it. He's my long shot. He's going to make me all the money. How about that? We shall see. That's <laughs> why we're all tuned in. I liked what he said in pre-race. He was excited. He's worried about the wind. Everybody's worried about the wind. Yeah, it's a little cooler than yesterday. Instead of the low 60s, temps in the high 50s, uh, the winds, it says out of the southwest, and that will change. Uh, 18 to 35 mile an hour winds, about a steady 20 mile an hour gust as we fought our way back from uh, the other end of the roof here, uh, back to the booth. So yes, the wind will absolutely uh, be a factor today. We get ready in Vegas. Here's the all new Toyota Camry TRD leading the field and that is the governor of Nevada Joe Lombardo at the wheel honorary pace car driver today teams checking their speed down pit road I'm going to go back to the wind it's one thing to have a constant wind okay but this gust you would talk to Kyle Larson heard from him uh, uh, Joey Logano the gusting is what you can't control kind of like on a dirt track as you're going around there all of a sudden a, a rut is formulated in one of the corners and you hook that thing the wrong way it throws you every which way that's what a gust does at 180 mile an hour we've all felt being behind a semi down the highway not at 180 mile an hour and that wind changing direction it's like the semi changing lanes in front of you so true uh, it would be like driving around and hitting a little bit of oil it's sudden it's a it's something that you don't expect to happen you're not ready for it and also let's hope it, it can be confusing what do we do with the car what what changes should i make do you really always want to change because of the wind do you have to lock it down where are you going to pay the penalty challenging to uh to deal with gusty conditions well let's show you what you're probably in store for here today as we saw yesterday in the xfinity race and in both the cup races last year all came down to a late restart and a thrilling finish as teammates battled here in the spring. Alex Bowman taking it to Kyle Larson to capture the flag. Sure did. Huge win for Alex Bowman. And then this one. This was a battle, but this was also the gamble that I was talking about, about being in Las Vegas. That 22 car gambled. They put tires on. They came and pounced on that win at the end, passing Ross Chastain. 
I think that's what it comes down to. How you split these stages up, short pitting or not, two tires at the end. If that opportunity comes, depending on if the caution comes at the right time, might just be your day in old Las Vegas. Well, that depends on your driver, too. I think the gambles that you take depend on the style of driver you have. Are they the ones that are aggressive and can make up a couple of spots, or do you need to, do you need to keep them out front? And update once again. The number nine of Chase Elliott. Uh, Chase vacationing in Colorado this week, Friday. Uh, broke his tibia, his shin bone, in a snowboarding accident. Now, he's a veteran snowboarder. It was just an off-week vacation thing, and this happened. Three-hour surgery Friday night. He flew home yesterday, and Josh Berry, who drives in the Xfinity Series for Junior Motorsports, tapped for the number nine. Yep. Uh, yesterday, we were explaining that this is his first time ever in a Gen 7 Cup car, but not as first start in the series. He ran two races in 2021, but that was before this car debuted, so this is all new for Josh Berry. Hey, I tell you what, we've been hearing Dale Jr., old buddy Dale, telling everybody how good this Josh Berry is. We're fixing to find out. No better opportunity you could ask for than being in that nine car filling in for Chase Elliott. He will start uh, 29th, and here's a tweet from Chase Elliott thanking everybody for their support and uh, wishing Josh Berry well today. Three cars at the back of the field, unable to qualify. Tyler Reddick, engine issues before practice. Harrison Burton uh, crashed in practice. A mechanical problem, nothing, uh, not his fault. They are in a backup car in the number 21. Uh, a loose lug nut from another series spit through his radiator in practice, dumped water on the right front tire, and he lost control and crashed. B.J. McLeod, transaxle problem. And so he is also in the back without being able to qualify. Joey Logano, starting from the pole. You heard him talking about pit stall, the importance of, of that number one stall, but you saw that steering wheel. I know you're asking yourself, what were those three lines on there? That's how he adjusts that wheel when he comes in. A little bit to the right on the right side, a little bit to the left on the left. Here we go. Pace car on pit road. Here comes the field to the starting line. Logano elected the inside, and the Penzo 400's underway. Already, Kyle Larson pouncing on that outside. That rookie trying to make a move on Ty Gibbs. He's got Ross Chastain behind him up high, Kyle Larson. So he knows if he pulls out a line, he's got someone that's going to go with him. And he does. <laughs> a big-time push right to the back bumper of his teammate, William Byron. Love this place. Look at the three-wide action all the way back. 24 is almost cleared, but he's three behind him. Legato leads lap one. I tell you what, that opened the door up for his teammate, Ryan Blaney, right there. Don't not count him out. Oh, he wanted up right there. Tried to. Spotter said no chance outside. Here comes William Byron. But three and four races differently than one and two. And here comes Byron steaming around the outside. Front six single file. Saw a huge block back there, and Kyle Busch off a of turn four, blocking his old teammate, Denny Hamlin. And Hamlin, in turn, blocked his teammate, Christopher Bell. So here is the race at sixth. I looked for Kyle. We talked to him. You heard. But I looked for him to be a lot faster right off the truck than he was. I talked to Randall Burnett. Obviously, he thought so, too. Was on the pole here last year, and, and they struggled. They struggled with speed, worked on this car. Looks like they found the magic. Lots of bumps. You can see them bouncing down through there. What that is is the, uh, the tunnel down there in one and two. It just keeps with age. That, that concrete, that asphalt settles. Keeps getting worse and worse. Plays havoc on these teams. Christopher here Bell in the 20 down underneath Hamlin for another try at eighth place. That's what's hard for the teams. You have bumps on one end and it's smooth on the other. You have to give up a little bit with your setup, your ride heights, to be getting through those bumps, but it's, it, it, it hurts you on a smooth three and four. Ty Gibbs, the rookie, holding back a pack here as the front six have scooted away. This is for seven. You know, he's Dad. definitely tied. Ty's definitely holding up the group just a little bit, but but let's just p focus on how great that qualifying run for him was. Young driver right up front. 
You have to log laps, Danica. You have to log laps and learn, and that's what he's doing right now. A little bit of patience goes a long ways. Larson to third, and he's running a groove down at the bottom of one and two that nobody used yesterday in practice or qualifying. You know, I'm noticing a lot of drivers running low. They're running low in one and two, which they were not doing at all yesterday. And um, I see majority of the field down there right now. Well, and you asked Kyle Larson about that in pre-race, and what he said was you got to go with or not, and that's exactly, exactly. what uh, Ryan Blaney's doing to him. He's putting him where he doesn't want to be. You can see him running low. He's going to try to slide up and clear, slide up, slide up. <laughs> Wasn't clear, but he moved him up enough. Blaney gave him the position. Those bumps are treacherous down on the bottom, way more bumpy on the bottom than they are on the top. Those drivers know that. They put them down there. If they're going to make a pass, they're going to have to do it the hard way. Talked to Larson this morning. He told me the two best cars here are the two that are out front right now, Logano and Byron. Look at that run that Ross Chastain just had off the of three and four. He went really, really high in three and four, got a huge run down the front straight and made it happen. Yeah, Blaney's definitely not taking off well. He's not happy with the fire in his race car. Maybe it'll settle in. Long stage, 80 laps in this first stage. You know, sometimes you have your car be really good on a short run. Sometimes it's good on a long run. Obviously, we're going to have to see how this pans out after a few more laps, but he'll definitely need to work on the short run car. I tell you who's good on a short run. You see him right there in Joey Logano's mirror. This Will and Byron is coming and his teammates in tow. Headline up by two. Headline up by two. Larson Headline narrowed the gap here. to the top two in no time at all. Byron looking high, Larson on the bottom. Joey Logano's got a mirror full of Chevrolets. And you're right, where you need to go? You know, you're trying to take that air away from the car behind you, but the problem is you got two cars behind you. About the time you move up and take it away from William Byron, that five car will slip around you. William Byron to the lead, trying to score his first finish of the season, better than 25th. He's out front of Joey Logano, Kyle Larson, Ross Chastain, and Ryan Blaney, the top five. Ten laps complete in Las Vegas. NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by Progressive Insurance. Save when you bundle auto, home, or motorcycle insurance. And by Ford, built for America. 15 laps complete in Las Vegas. Hendrick Chevy's William Byron, Kyle Larson, three-tenths of a second apart. They uh, are one-two as Logano and Chastain, third and fourth, Blaney fifth. But how about Tyler Reddick? He's gained 16, he's gained 18 spots so far, four while we were in commercial break. And we'll he's update that uh, story in a moment, but first, a closer look at Aero with uh, Larry McReynolds and the Toyota Cutaway car. Mike, let's talk about the air that flows through the nose of the race car. I'm here in the Toyota Tech Center at our Toyota Cutaway car. Now, the grill opening is that yellow area below the front bumper. You cannot run any tape whatsoever on that opening. The air that flows into that area goes to two different locations. Part of it actually feeds air to the engine through the throttle body. The other air actually goes through a duct that feeds air out the louvers in the hood. How they control the flow of that air is that block-off plate right there. Teams can run any configuration configuration of block out plate that they want and what that does it affects how much air is pulled through the radiator and affects the pressure of the air going out those louvers that affects the aerodynamics of the race car. Mike it's always that fine line between cooling efficiency and aerodynamic efficiency. Uh -huh. Thanks Larry. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely impressed with Tyler Reddick's run. We've got, you know, the biggest mover being him up 19 spots now to 15th position. And then on the other end of the spectrum, we have Ty Gibbs, who started right up front. And uh, he's down to 22nd. So, you know, we've got the biggest mover both directions. And um, but I think I think Tyler's going to be a factor in this race. I know we started at the back, but when we started off the show here and looked at long, long shots, I, I was going to pick Tyler for the long shot. Well, that's a good pick. I mean, it's very impressive. No problem. Remember, not one lap of practice qualifying nothing for Tyler Reddick. All right, let's go back to eighth place and last week's winner, Kyle Busch. Started really good. 
getting a little tighter. Kind of flatlined a little bit right now. Throttle up early and try to go. It just keeps driving. The left the front out of the track. Got good security here, so it's just too much pressure to drive. Let's see it. The key that I like there is he told him, you know, he told him what the car is doing, but he also hinted that he can go. He can free it up. Got plenty of security that the rear end stuck, so you can free me up, help my front end. I need to be able to pick up the gas earlier, make those straightaways longer, keep that momentum. Now he's five seconds off the lead, but he is closing on leader William Byron. Now let's check with Jamie. We talked about the great qualifying effort for Ty Gibbs. He slipped back to 22nd. Remember, he is a rookie, and I talked to his crew chief, Chris Gale. He said, today is not going to be easy. It's all about logging laps, giving me good feedback. He needs to focus on the feedback and tell me what that race car is doing. Right now, it is not turning on the bottom. He needs it to be better. Regan. Well, Jamie, it's been a rough start to the race for Ryan Blaine. He started third, back to seventh position right now. The word from the driver is that he is plowing tight. Can't get the front tires to work like he wants to. And then the car randomly snaps loose at different moments throughout the corner. So a little bit of work needs to be done on that 12 car. Here is fifth place, Hamlin and Logano, and uh, they are lapping faster than race leader William Byron right now. They are, too, and I tell you, you see Denny Hamlin making that dive move down on the bottom, see if he clears him, but his teammate, Christopher Bell, he beat him to the punch. He's the one that's passed him faster than him. Christopher Bell's on the move in the 20. Bell in fourth place now, three and a half off the lead. 87 leaders out of 65. Coming up to complete 24 laps, that is William Byron's car number. He's your leader, 1.2 seconds ahead of his Hendrick Chevy teammate, Kyle Larson. Ross Chastain in third. Toyotas fill the rest of the top five with Bell and Hamlin, then Paul Sitter Logano. Welcome back to NASCAR Cup Racing from Las Vegas on Fox, presented by Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. Closing in on 30 laps complete. William Byron is your leader. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, powering the race from green to checkered flag and every mile in between. Goodyear, more driven. Byron's lead, 1.3 seconds on Larson, 3.4 on Chastain, but they keep running higher and higher on this racetrack. Eventually, somebody's going to run out of room, and that somebody was Kyle Busch. Yes, sir, you heard him talking about being tight. It bit him, bit him off the corner. He had two cars side by side, got into the wall. Here it is. You can see he's headed the wrong direction, too tight in the wake of those two cars. Eventually snapped loose, got in the wall pretty hard. A lot of damage there. He was seventh when that happened. He is now 11th. Let's listen in. Body looks okay, just the paint's off the tires. Got the right rear works on the right front. Steering wheels off, got this center to the right, half hour. That's the one I didn't want to hear. That's the one that's, that, that crew chief Randall Burnett didn't want to hear either. Steering wheels off, that toe's off, front end damage. Maybe a toe link. That toe link could possibly do it. It just seemed like he hit way hard with the right front. Here comes Blaney on pit road with maybe with a problem. Possibly strategy here. 33 laps complete. 47 to go in the stage, so we're kind of right in the fuel window. Regan. Well, you see the 12 car, Ryan Blaney. Of course, that car tight, as we reported earlier, that brought them to pit road a little bit earlier than most. That's not a bad call. Falling back, he, he can only fall back so far. Again, he can make it to the end. 80 laps in this stage. Here they come. He's going to draw a man. Somebody else saw that. Who is it? Martin Shrex Jr. Yeah, Larry told us today's fuel window, 48 to 52 laps. So right on time. Jamie. 19 of Martin Shrex Jr. Losing the nose a bit too much off of two. And he's loose over the bumps. He was loose yesterday as well. He couldn't fully commit in qualifying. So they still have some work to do to tighten that car up. A four-tire stop here. You're going to see some of them start peeling off, but why would you not peel off as a, as a leader? You know, it's second difference. You cannot peel off sometimes because you never know if that caution's going to come out and it could bite you. You're riding down pit road with Denny Hamlin, Regan. Mike Denny Hamlin's been pleased with his race car thus far at the start of this race. Pretty smooth and steady on the track, just a little bit too tight in turns one and two. He wants an adjustment for that. 
Austin Sendrick is in. And more comers. Harrison Burton, Ryan Priest on pit road. Again, you still haven't seen the leader, William Byron, his teammate, Larson. They haven't pitted yet. They're going to keep an eye on Chastain. Some of these other guys are running maybe in the top five. But I want to take you back. Why haven't they? You see these guys coming out and running a second faster. Somebody wrecks it and spins out, causes a caution. All these cars could be a lap down. That's why, as a leader, you have to be careful here. True, Logano, but they're fast. Chastain, here they come. Logano, Chastain are in. There's Gibbs, Noah Gregson, Jamie. Long drive all the way down pit road to the number one pit box for Joey Logano as you ride on board. He comes to a stop. That car is just working too tight now, not turning through the center enough on that Joey Logano car. They made an air pressure adjustment on the right side. So now that some of the leaders have been in, everybody else pretty much needs to follow. You know, I think of all times in the race to pit a little bit early. It's the first one because you don't know what, exactly how your car is going to be. So it's the best time to make a big swing at. And here they come, Danica. William Byron, teammate. Larson, Chastain, all your leaders are coming now. now I think they waited because they were fast. William and, and Kyle were running out front. They felt good about their car, clean air. Regan. Like the five car, Kyle Larson has had good pace all race long. Crew Chief Cliff Daniels just telling him to take what the race car will give him, and that is it. Jamie? William Byron, the 24, just led his first laps of the season. 27 on the board already. Just a touch too free. But this race car has been good off the truck since yesterday. Noah Gregson, too fast entering pit road. That's what you can't afford to do. Green flag pit stops, no mistakes. The only thing you can bite you is a big time mistake, like a uh, pit road penalty, speeding penalty. So Tyler Reddick has yet to pit and he has assumed the lead. Okay, that 12 car, you see him on the left. Blaney was the first one, jump on pit road, get advantage of those faster lap times. I said much uh, close to a second faster. A lot of gain there, a lot of opportunity for those guys. Jamie? These RFK cars are off to a good start this season. Brad Keselowski just saying, car isn't bad. He's lacking a little bit of pace. They'll fix that with a little bit of air pressure. He just does not want to be any freer, Mike. So only five cars have yet to pit. Reddick, Bowman, Barry, Yaley, and B.J. McLeod. As you see on your pylon, they have uh, Bowman and Barry in now. Josh Berry is in. Noah Gregson comes down pit road to serve his penalty. Regan. Radic as well. Regan. Like the 45 of Tyler Reddick. Race car is a little bit too tight right now. The team has been coaching him up to just keep working on his entry speed to help out the tightness in that car. Ty Gibbs, too many men over the wall. That'll be a pass-through penalty. Oh, after the run he had in that first beginning yep. open opening segment, that's a, that's a killer. But, you know, I'm hearing all the cars are too tight, too tight, too tight. I don't think I've heard a single car be loose yet. You know, one of those things, and I almost pointed it out before you said that, look at the cloud cover. The cloud cover came in, the track's faster. That kind of tells me that's a reason why they could be too tight. Tough day for the hometown boys. Kyle Busch has been up in the wall, and Noah Gregson on his penalty drive down pit road is too fast again. He'll have to make another penalty drive down pit road and maybe reset his dash. So we cycle through with William Byron and Kyle Larson. They were 1.3 seconds apart before pit stops. They are now separated by two seconds. NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by the Credit One Bank NASCAR American Express Card. And by Toyota. Let's go places. 46 laps complete. There are 80 laps in stage one. One other penalty from pit stops. Michael McDowell had a speeding penalty, so he has now gone one lap down. We have 27 cars on the lead lap all the way back to... Austin Dillon and here are the results of green flag pit stops the front six held station Joey Logano ended up losing three spots in that exchange uh, Bubba Wallace picked up one and Ryan Blaney lost one 
Otherwise, things are much as they were. And Austin Dillon in danger of going a lap down here to William Byron. Pole sitter Joey Logano currently 10th. Ross Chastain running third, four seconds off the lead and uh, holding pretty close there to William Byron's pace within about a tenth, tenth and a half of a second as he works past Todd Gilliland, who's a lap down. This has been such a feel-good story, track house racing, not only last year, but picking right up where they left off. Got an opportunity to get Justin on here. Check this out. Hey, Justin Marks, it's Boyer and the guys up in the booth. Yeah, I hope it's a little warmer up there than it is down here. The action's hot, though, so we're good. I tell you what's hot. It's your company, Trackhouse Racing. Looking good, firing on all eight cylinders, picking up right where you left off, man. I'm telling you, I'm a believer. Last year was no fluke, no sophomore jinx happening. Where is this coming from? I, mean, I think it's a combination of a lot of things. We've got a lot of talented people here. You see Ross and Phil have been working well together for a couple of years, as has uh, Travis and Daniel. And, you know, it's just really good people. They've given us the good tools to work with. We've got a, an awesome uh, partner in Chevrolet supporting us alongside the other key partner teams, Hendrick and RCR. So we're just sort of clicking on all cylinders, like you said, but really it's just great people, access to great tools, and a uh, really, really motivated company. Tell me about Ross Chastain, Phil Surge, and Daniel Suarez, Travis Mack, right in front of you that we see there. How did you pair these guys up? You know, everything's about culture, about parity, about the uh, the chemistry with these guys. Why did you pick those guys with those drivers? Well, with Trackhouse uh, acquired Ganassi Racing last year, Phil and, and Ross are working together, and things are just starting to click for them. I mean, we really didn't want to disrupt that chemistry. They were getting some momentum going. We really wanted to keep that team uh, intact. And then when we started Trackhouse, it was really about finding a really, really motivated driver that really had something to prove in this sport and a really motivated crew chief that had something to prove in this sport. And that was Travis right here. We paired them together. Uh, they spent you know, a couple dinners together and got to know each other and just clicked right away. So uh, they complement each other really, really well. And uh, both teams work together really, really well. So, uh, you know, we... we uh, we put a lot of emphasis on our people. We try to get really, really motivated people. And uh, Phil and Travis never won before, never been to the playoffs before, and that was the same thing with both of our drivers. So they had that fire, they had that hunger, and uh, just put them all together and stood back and watched it happen. Well, buddy, it is fun to watch happen. Glad you're in this sport. You're a big part of it. You're on fire. I think that one car, he is without a doubt the car to beat. So good luck. Appreciate you guys. Stay warm up there. <laughs> Justin Marks, owner of Trackhouse Racing. Uh, we're with uh, Tyler Reddick. That is Alex Bowman, last year's winner here just ahead. This race is for 12th place, and they're pulled right in on Ryan Blaney. Up front, William Byron has led 40 laps, the most he's ever led in a Las Vegas Cup race. He's a half a second ahead of teammate Kyle Larson. The stars and stripes are flying high as the USA takes on the world's best. The World Baseball Classic, Great Britain, the United States, Saturday, 9 p.m. Eastern on Fox. Wednesday on FS1, the Big East Tournament tips off at Madison Square Garden with a big triple header. Starts at 3 Eastern, Butler St. John's, then DePaul versus Seton Hall. Finally, Georgetown Villanova. It's Wednesday, it's only on FS1 and the Fox Sports app. Here in Las Vegas, 59 laps complete. William Byron half a second ahead of his Chevy Camaro teammate Kyle Larson, Ross Chastain. Christopher Bell, Denny Hamlin for Toyota, and the first Ford is Brad Keselowski back in ninth place. You know, we've talked a lot about these smaller teams being better than some of the big ones, but, uh, you know, we look out front, you got William Byron out in the leads, Larson's in second, and um, they're super fast. I think, I think my pick's looking pretty good. Kyle Larson's been really fast. He's been closing in on William Byron just a little bit, um, but, you know, you've got the, you got the big teams out front right now. Tyler Reddick back up to 11th. Remember, he started 34th, got no practice, no qualifying, 
uh, because when they went to fire the engine up for practice, they found something they did not like and decided it was worth changing the engine and losing all of practice and qualifying before he's fast. Bubba Wallace. Uh, passing Harrison Burton. Remember, that's a backup car uh, for Burton, who's gone a lap down. Right in, man. We're just missing something. Just numb. All that off throttle time. It's just front tires chattering, waiting on his turn. All right, 10 points. Wallace tracking Truex. They are sixth and seventh, but running only about two tenths of a second behind the leader. And. Ryan Blaney not entirely thrilled with his car right now. I'm terrible, dude. They have no rear on entry. No rear stability on entry. Front don't turn. We're oh, just all over the racetrack. I don't know if the back of the car is not down enough or what, but no bueno. Way down on grip. I was going to say, you heard Bubba Wallace, you know, telling him really what happened with the front of his car. That thing's fast. Him and his teammate, all these Toyotas came to play. See, you, you heard Danica talk about Reddick, but I'm telling you, Bubba Wallace is extremely fast. He's had a good weekend all weekend. He's been in the hunt the whole time, so this isn't surprising to me. And he's, in fact, he's been, he's been on a good run so far this season, so uh, if he can just stay consistent, I think he's going to have a good day. And he needs one. He has run well, but he has not been around at the finish of either race so far this year. There's a lot of things, you know, it takes me back to Blaney, what he said, just down on grip, up on top of the racetrack. There's things that those guys can do as he gains some track position or loses it, raising and lowering these cards. You can't afford to do that on green flag pit stop get to this caution stage in they'll make some adjustments get that diffuser in play all that arrow underneath these cars it's very dependent on the, the speed that you're going and the traffic that you're in now look at this top 11 uh, all the way down through Tyler Reddick only two of them Byron and Bush started this race up front in the top five everybody else has surged to the front uh, Josh Berry has gone one lap down in his drive, replacing the injured Chase Elliott for uh, today and the foreseeable future. And logging laps. William Byron, Kyle Larson as we take you Fox side by side. have heart for being fearless, determined, and bold. That's why it's time for you to be a Ram. Now with 0.9% financing for 60 months, get an average 11,600 in finance savings on our most popular models. Gillette presents the Gillette Labs with exfoliating bar. The bar on the handle removes unseen dirt and debris that gets in the way of the blades for effortless shaving in one efficient stroke. All with a lifetime warranty. And if you want to keep the beard, use King C Gillette, a lineup of products designed to cleanse, soften, trim, and style for your best beard. Gillette, the best a man can get. Monday morning, when they ask, what'd you do this weekend? Tell them everything. NASCAR returns to Atlanta Motor Speedway for the Ann Better Health 400 weekend. Three races, two days, one nonstop party. You gotta be here. Get your tickets now at AtlantaMotorSpeedway.com. The Eagle has landed. That's one small step for man. Hey, what's up? Uh, Houston, we have a situation. How did you get here? Your character's in our video game. Video game? Yeah, it's what we do with Xfinity 10G. It's like, you know, the best network imaginable. What the heck is that? Those are the bad guys. Are they friendly? The 10G network, only from Xfinity. One giant leap for mankind. There's a thin line in the NASCAR Xfinity series between being a name they know and being a name they'll never forget. I need to try.
try it first. Seventy-one laps complete. Three Chevys on point. Byron Larson, Chastain, four Toyotas lined up to run them down. Denny Hamlin, Christopher Bell, Martin Truex, Bubba Wallace, and the rest of the top ten. The Chevys of Bowman and Bush, and the first board is Kozlowski in tenth. There is he finally gave it up. Denny's been hounding his uh, Christopher Bell, his teammate there, finally gave him the spot. I think you're going to see Denny go right on by Chastain too. That eleven car is fast. Sometimes you just want going back with you. Sometimes you just want your teammate to have a go at the guy you've been working on. Well, you can only hold him up so long. Eventually, you see you're getting farther and farther away from the car in front of you, Chastain. You're, you're right. Give him a shot at it. I'm holding him up. So eight laps from the end of stage one, during which the top ten will receive ten points for the stage winner, down to one point for tenth. That will manifest itself later in the season. Well, that's just it. You know, I never would have thought I would hear a team talk about points. And I heard that Cliff Daniels. I said, man, at Daytona, what were you doing out there in that that uh, dual race running for these points when you're locked in the front row? He said stage points, buddy. They're important in a big way. And don't you think for a second we don't know that. Well, let's go back to 14th place behind Eric Jones. That's Joey Logano, our pole sitter, Jamie. Well, Mike, we're at that point in the race where you see the comers and goers. Who's good on short run versus who's good on the long run? Joey Logano, he seems to fire off really good, but after about 15 laps, he's just getting too tight. So your pole sitter now is falling back to 14, and Mike, he hasn't been able to make up much ground. Tell you one thing I noticed in the in car of watching Joey is just how tight his headrest is to this helmet. Very, very tight quarters. See that? And you can see just, man, he looks focused in there. Head down and digging, focused. Tell you another thing about that. When it's that tight, Danica, you've been in there. You're, you almost get a vibration, right? And this is what where I guess I'm coming from with Logano. The guy wears glasses, too. All those things I would think would play havoc on a driver, especially wearing glasses. Yes, if you get the headrest too tight, it can kind of start to bounce back and forth a little bit. But look. These are all the things that you get rid of at the beginning of the season if you've made a change. He's been in the series so long. I'm sure he's comfortable, but yeah, I wouldn't want more glasses. I wear, co I wear contacts. But NASCAR did some research in the off season. The teams are continually doing research and they're trying to reduce that distance between right. the helmet and the padding in case of impact. You don't want that drive. The more that driver's head travels, the harder the impact can be, even when it's padded. Exactly. The more anything travel, right? It's just the harder you're going to hit it. I don't think you have to look any further further than what you see with Joey right there. Well, William Byron is doing what Kyle Busch did here Friday night in the trunk race, and that is stinking up the show. Uh, Kyle Larson is drifted back now to where he is ninth tenths of a second back. Chastain seven seconds back. Hamlin, Bell, Truex, and Bowman, and here's Kyle Busch in ninth place. Regan. Well, Mike, we had the radio earlier after Kyle Busch got into the wall about the steering wheel. Since his pit stop earlier on, though, no issues right now. Actually likes that car better now than he did the first run of the race. Only issue, just got the right rear of the car a little bit too hot. Needs the front tires to work better also. Caution free through 77 laps. 78 now, two laps to go in stage one. Pit road is closed. I'm extremely impressed with the, the toughness of that race car, the toughness in these cars in general. He smoked the wall, hit yeah. the right front hard, hard enough that he said that wheel's off. Dan, again, any time my wheel's been off that far, your day is done. Yeah, that was a, it was a big hit, but that's what's so cool about these new cars is that you can get into the wall a little bit and still keep going, and, and that makes it interesting. But, hey, it does leave behind some of those times where you hit the wall and it actually made your car better. Yeah. <laughs> There's Byron, and there is the extent of his lead. Nine tenths of a, or rather, nine tenths of a second on Kyle Larson. And another six and a half back to Ross Chastain. Tyler Reddick, we've talked about, no practice. He's been fast, and he is late in picking up his fastest nice lap of the race. Green and white checkered flag for William Byron, who picks up his first stage win of 2023. 
Yeah, tons of speed. The Hander Camp 1 2, Chastain back there. I tell you what's not up there is I'm looking down through here. Three Chevrolets, three Toyotas, another Chevrolet. The first Ford is Keslowski. Brad Keslowski with RFK in the six car in 10th. All the rest of them 13, 14, 15, 17th, 19th. Laps down Briscoe, Burton, McDowell. Big time trouble for the Fords. They're going to have to make some adjustments here. All right, pit stops coming at the end of stage one. One by William Byron in a Hendrick Chevy Camaro. Saturday night, America's biggest stars lay it on the line as they take on Great Britain in the World Baseball Classic. Saturday 9 Eastern on Fox in the Fox Sports app. There's Bryce Harper. Two-time MVP, he was the Grand Marshal for today's race. Gave the command, and the governor drove the pace car. Very cool to see Bryce cool. down there. He was enjoying it, he was digging it. Um, what an awesome player, awesome human. Neat to see him here. Bryce went to high school here in Las Vegas. There are the stage one points. William Byron, who won the stage. Brad Keselowski, 10th. Five Chevys, four Toyotas, and one Ford. I tell you what, them Chevys are having fun, but they better not have too much fun. These Toyotas are <laughs> hounding on them, ready to break them up. Look at that, Danica. You want to wave to these <laughs> wave to these fans? Hey, if they could see me now. <laughs> yep. That's cool. So pits should be open this time by. This will be the first caution flag pit stop of the day. They had a green flag pit stop sequence, lap 34 to 39, with the leaders all coming in about 37. Now this is the pit stop. Finally, you can make some more adjustments. You can afford that time. Can't afford to do that on a green flag pit stop. Maybe just some subtle adjustments. The obvious, it would be an air pressure adjustment. I think you're going to see them wedge wrenches out in the air, making them wedge adjustments, raising and lowering those cars, ride heights. All that stuff is dependent on where you're running the pace, and that just depended on where you're at on the lap. Uh, I'd say, excuse me, in the traffic. I'd say Hamlin and Truex probably made the biggest and best adjustment. They pitted early the last time, made a lot of ground up. Very good point. Here we go. Lead lap cars are in. Here's Regan. Like the five of Kyle Larson, happy from the driver's seat right now. At the end of that run, though, he made note that the start car started getting too loose over the bumps with the rear of it. And the one car, Ross Chastain, first run that car was tight. It has swung the opposite direction now, complaining about it being too loose for him. The rear tires were gone off of it. Jamie? Martin Truex Jr., remember last week they lost a wheel, so two of the crew members are suspended. We have fill-ins for rear changer and Jackman. Got a little bit too tight there. The 24, too tight in dirty air. Needs a little bit more turn, Mike. So here's your uh, race off pit road, sponsored by Ram. Byron and Larson hold station. Denny Hamlin picks up two spots. And uh, tough break there for Tyler Reddick. He was blocked in by the 16, Almendinger, uh, exiting his pits. Let's check in with old William Byron, stage one winner. How about you, William Byron? Spoiler, Danica, Mike up in the booth, you got us? Yeah, I got you, man. Well, buddy, started on the front row and haven't looked back bad fast with this 24 car. Looks tough on the paint scheme. Definitely tough on the, the old lap time ticker. What do you got? Yeah, it's good. It's, it's good. I think uh, Kyle was really good there, too. So got a couple good Hendrick Chevys and feel good about it. So just got to keep adjusting on the racetrack. A little loose first round, a little tight second run. So uh, the lap trap is definitely dynamic. It kind of plays a factor in your lane choice. So just got to keep it rolling. Is there any line that's maybe looser, tighter out there? Cool thing about this track, uh, you can move around high and low up against the wall, and then the bumps in one and two. Yeah, honestly, just the wind is such a big factor right now. Like, you feel it kind of push you off in the corner and get that RPM going down the back straight away. So that's what I feel. All right, buddy. Thanks for your time. Good luck out there. Appreciate it. William Byron, stage one winner. We mentioned Tyler Reddick. He came into the pits 11th and came out 20th after getting blocked in. We're at the end of stage one in Las Vegas with a restart coming up. Welcome back to NASCAR Cup Racing from Las Vegas on Fox, presented by Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. We're at the end of stage one after pit stops. 
And into stage two, here's an update on the Coca-Cola Racing family. Denny Hamlin third. Suarez and Logano right together with Austin Dillon 25th. Uh, Ryan Priest got the free pass on this uh, caution flag for the end of stage one. That'll give us 23 cars on the lead lap when we restart. Uh, quick info on Chase Elliott, injured in a snowmobiling accident on Friday, surgery Friday night, flew home yesterday. Uh, Chase is home in good spirits, watching the race with his car owner, Rick Hendrick, and starts physical therapy tomorrow morning. Josh Berry behind the wheel uh, is right now the first car one lap down in 24th. And there is Rick Hendrick's statement. And uh, that was earlier this weekend. Just to clarify, clean it up. It was a snowboarding accident, I'm not sorry. snowmobile. Well, yes. in all fairness, that was what came out early, the early reports. So I know what you had in mind. It was definitely a snowboarding accident. Right. Nonetheless, you can see everybody's wishing old Chase Elliott was in this nine. Now, Tyler Reddick, uh, about that pit stop that has now put him back in 20th place. I was trying to do a better job there. It's just how much further out could I have the right front? Like, I could have not been nosed in as much, right? I could have been further out of the box or to the right. Yes, definitely had room to turn back out. We were probably a couple of feet, I think, inside the box. Yeah, I, you can't really see it from here, but he's definitely at the wrong angle. 45 degree angle pointed in, couldn't get out of the box. You can see the time lost. Very costly air. This car is extremely fast, mowed up through the field. Can't go backwards at this point. Everybody's gonna get better. Clean up the mistakes. This 45's fast though. Here we come to the choose, and William Byron will take the inside. Kyle Larson will start alongside on the front row. And you saw A.J. Allmendinger there. He did not block Reddick in. He was properly positioned in his box. Yeah, I thought so. he was plenty deep. Yep. There's the all-new Toyota Camry TRD that leads the field and will lead the back to green here to begin stage two. Byron Larson on the front row. Hamlin, Chastain, Truex Bell, Wallace Bowman, Kozlowski Bush, the top ten. I'm excited to see what Hamlin can do here. Yes. Made up a lot of ground. Another pit stop to make his car better. Now remember this year, the Geico Restart Zone has changed. It is 25% longer on each end than it was. This is something NASCAR is trying for the first five weeks of the season at the request of the drivers to have a longer restart zone. And it ended up in mayhem last week uh, when Joey Logano decided he would be late to the throttle, which was his option as the control car. Unfortunately, things stacked up behind him and a number of cars got wrecked on a restart. It's the very reason you have a long and want and ask for a long one to put the advantage to the leader. Unfortunately, those guys were lagging back behind him. Not just one of them, all of them stacked him up accordion and he ended up wrecking. Bunch of cars, good cars. All right, Larson spun his tires a little bit on the outside. Yeah, but what you saw in those first three cars, first three rows, nose to tail, they were all getting ready to push. What we saw last time was a car that lagged back, looked like he was trying to get a run. That kind of can create a slinky effect. Everybody stayed pretty in order this time. Alex Bowman lagged back a bit, and you see he's pulled dead even with Bubba Wallace racing for seventh on the bottom. And Martin Truex. You see how quick they sorted that out. They needed to because you saw Keselowski coming up on them. That help in the rear view mirror. If you're not sorted out, you're still three wide. That's opportunity for Brad. But Brock. got up there on the outside, got that toe pushed on by him. Speaking of pushed on by him, huge push by Chastain. But you said it, Danica, here comes that 11. Denny's such a smart driver, you know, you just, he can have a rough start to a race or a run, but he's just got, he has discipline, experience, and he just always seems to come through. And this is, 
this is a quick come through as we're just starting the second segment, but uh, he made up a lot of progress, started third, passing for second right now, and Kyle Larson, who was super fast in that first run. Yeah, and that was a super close block by Larson. That looked very, very close. You can see how bad it affected 11 in his wake. Got tight. Three Toyotas trying to fight their way to the front with Ross Chastain right in their midst in the number one. Still seeing that top roll fast, though. If you've got that outside lane, all you have to do is get on the rear corner of the car in front of you, and you've got the lane. And you force them to have to lift. They can't keep the throttle down. They need the track up off the corner. You force them. Uh, again, you're in a catbird Right seat. there. All you, yep. see, you see Denny right on the outside of Ross Chastain's left, right rear. That's all he has to do to have that entire lane and that all that momentum to himself. Of course, then you get a little bit of the pull down the front straight away, and the cars pull back by with the aerodynamics. But definitely the best place to be to really, really have the best shot at passing a car is rolling that top. Flip side of that, Chastain, you saw him dive that thing way deep down into turn one, tried to slide up, slide job, if you will. You have to get up in front of him before you get to that three-quarter mark and start talking about an exit. Now, you can send it that way on fresh tires, but how many times can you get away with that in a run? That slide job, yes, it does slide the car, and you can overheat the tires and, uh, and give yourself a little bit of a penalty from that, but that is a classic move. Drivers pull that all the time. You see, just like Danica's talking about, just barely that 19 Martin Truex Jr. got to the outside of Denny Hamlin. Denny's in trouble. Both of his teammates got around him. You know, I wonder if he just worked his tires a little bit. He was, you know, he started up front. He was racing really hard for that second position. Maybe he just overheated his tires a little bit too much. Also a little bit of situational, right? Got trapped down on the bottom. That block by Larson got him slowed up, got him in a situation where he didn't want to be in. Those are things that are very tricky about a track like this. It has these options. Once a guy gets out there, loses that momentum, takes a while to get it back. 95 laps complete. The last time William Byron led this many laps in a cup race, he went to victory lane. That was Martinsville last April. And a little contact there for Ty Gibbs. NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. Is it the best Coke ever? And by Indeed. If you're hiring, you need Indeed. 101 laps complete in Las Vegas, and that Joey Logano fan is not happy. Joey started on pole, currently running 14th. <laughs> it, so, in Clint's game, Super 6 question for Stage 2, which manufacturer will have the car that gains more positions by the end of Stage 2, and how many will they gain? Ford or Chevrolet. Well, right now, that advantage goes to Chevrolet. A lot of racing left before the end of stage two. All you got to do, remember, get on that Fox Bet Super 6 app. Come get my money. A lot of fun over there. Easy to do, free to play. More contact. Uh, Chris Bush or Daniel Suarez right here. Oh, Suarez way tight. Pushes Busher into the wall. You can see the flames come out of Suarez on the bottom. He lifts too late. Now, earlier we saw Ty Gibbs caught in a sandwich between uh, Corey LaJoy and Austin Dillon, and Josh Berry has been up and into the wall in the number nine, and look at that uh, wheel wobbly on the left front of tires. Gibbs. Tires down. Josh Berry way up high. Oh, no. Corey LaJoy, and there he's in the fence. Certainly is, Mike. That is not what Josh Berry wanted at all. Probably didn't even want to be in that situation. You heard him talk about logging laps, Danica. All that man wanted to do, log all the laps, stay in the lead lap. Yeah, but it tells me he's not happy. I mean, he dropped back very quickly in the race, and, I, I, and then he hits the wall. I, I would say he's probably struggling. He's probably really unhappy with the balance. I, I wonder what he's struggling with, but I, I bet it's significant. Well, unfortunately, hey, this is the big times. This is the Cup Series. These guys are all good. Doesn't matter where you're at on this track. You're there for a reason. And he'll learn. Hopefully he gets another shot in this nine car. Not the end of the day. A lot of racing left. All right. Noah Gregson makes a green flag pit stop. And we'll check in with Jamie. Oh, my God. Alex Bowman running fifth right now. We've talked a lot about tire wear. Alex Bowman has been saying he's tight. So as a result, this is the right front. A little bit of courting on the first round. And then on the second stop, a little bit of courting right here on the right front. I just talked to Goodyear, and they said this track is taking rubber really well today. So they don't see any more issues moving forward. It's only getting better with every run. 
Thanks, Jamie. Gregson on and off pit road, but that would be early for a scheduled stop. Uh, don't believe they put tires on it, so he'll try to get back up to speed. Oh, he had taken the wave around. He did not stop at the end of the stage, so that was scheduled for Noah Gregson. He is two laps down. You know, taking him back to Barry, some of those other guys you see, um, you know, Busher getting into the wall. It's crunch time. These long green flag pit stops, those, la those lead lap cars start putting the pressure on you. That's the hardest part. Once you get behind, you eventually get in a situation where you have to go, right? And, and then you start making mistakes. You start pushing the envelope, trying to get to the outside. That's all out of desperation. Brian Blaney having issues today, currently in 15th, Regan. Mike struggling on the racetrack and just came on the radio to tell the team he has got a crazy vibration with that race car right now. Doesn't know why. No front turn in it. Keep in mind the first set of tires that came off that 12 car, they had some cords. Maybe an issue developing there on the 12. It's not a good feeling at all, Danica. That's the last thing you want is to uh, have a vibration and not know what it is. And then, of course, getting that confirmation with cording on the tires, which next the next thing that happens after that really feels bad. So, you know, but it's typical that the, that the cording is worse at the beginning of the race. And now that we have so much less track time, there's less rubber on the track, that should hopefully exponentially get better throughout the race. Penske cars 14th, 15th, and 22nd right now. Rick Hendricks Chevrolets have dominated here. William Byron has now led 96 laps with 109 complete and pit stops on the way. There's a race status across the top of the screen. The only caution we have had was between stages. At the end of stage one, we've been green flag otherwise all the way. With now, Hendrick, one, two, three. Here's your progressive race summary. William Byron has led 102 laps of 115. Logano, Redick, and Keselowski have also had laps out front. So four lead changes, 23 lead lap cars right now. And the only caution was for the end of stage one. Bubba Wallace, ninth place. We listened in. Yeah, obviously not happy. The way he's saying goodbye is those cars driving away from him out of the windshield. That's not something you want to see. You want to see that out of the back windshield. Um, but it's also important what he just cleaned up there. Hey, don't get me too free, though. Don't listen to me whine too much here because I might just get exactly what I asked for. You get me too free, I won't be able to be competitive too loose either. Speaking of loose, I want to talk about it. We heard him. He's complaining about being tight, right? Bubba Wallace is struggling. One, two, three. Hendrick Motorsports, every one of those guys, their cars were working loose. Look at the proofs in the pudding. The only bunch out there that's really talking about cars working loose, everybody else too tight and too slow. Yeah, I mean, that's that was the question at the top of the show is like, does it take to be loose to be fast? And, and it sure looks like it. Blaney looks like he's got a handful. Whoa. He is not happy. That's way loose off the corner, too. That's also, again, he's a tight car. And I think he's seen Wiglin right there, too. He's been talking about that wheel vibration. and that vibration. He might be trying to do that but that's a product of being tight up off there running that outside line you start coming off the wall getting out of there and as you that's why it was so unwrap late. the wheel and it'll get loose snap loose at late who was it last week was it logano that thought he might have a loose wheel and it turned out to be a piece of debris between the wheel and the caliper was causing that vibration because it was way way too late in the run to be a loose wheel but a similar sounding problem see that guy right there in the five start to put that helmet on you're gonna see pit stop soon how about now, Chris Busher? Four fresh tires and fuel at lap 120. That's 45 laps to the end of the stage. Ross he was a car Go ahead. Ross Chastain pitted a little bit later than others last time, but he's dropped back to six now from third, so I wonder if we're going to see him pit earlier. Oh, well, going back to Busher for two, two seconds. He was the guy that was we saw on the wall, right? I, I didn't I, I look for him to come in there, get some adjustments, get those tires on and gain some pos, uh, track position. We listened in on Ryan Blaney. Well, I thought I was OK. Sideways. 
No front turn. That, and that's a hard thing to fix. If you don't have front turn, you're tight in the center of the corner, but you're snapping loose in and off, what direction do you go? Very hard thing to fix. And Two he said like problems. a light switch too. So obviously it's just hard to hit it. It is, I'm thinking just low grip, right? It, there's nothing to lean on either end. It's just once one goes, it's, it's sudden for him. And I've had, you know, sets of tires before, you know, as you go and those start wearing out again, you know, it's like a light switch, lap 25 or whatever it is, man. This thing's a handful again, all of a sudden getting loose in. JJ Yaley pitting, Cody Ware made a stop a lap ago. So far, no leaders or no lead lap cars coming to pit road. This Hendrick boys look strong. One, two, three. Yep. William Byron, Kyle Larson just Here comes away the first one. 19 Martin Truex Jr. on pit road. And he was in the top 10, so that may draw the rest of them early in the pit window. Jamie. Yeah, the 19 has been pretty decent overall, but during the middle of that run, he had a little bit of an issue, had a fuel pressure issue, and they told him to switch to fuel position two, and it seemed to clear things up. So certainly keeping an eye and an ear on that as they go around the car on the left side, it's just fuel and four tires. Christopher Bell is in. He's going to give up a top five spot. Regan. Mike Christopher Bell was just a little bit too tight that last run to make time at the end. He needs a little bit of help to make the end of the run better. And the one car, Ross Chastain, that car was loose a run ago. Now it is swung back to tight. They're bouncing around back and forth with it. Chastain, Kozlowski, Wallace, Almarola, and more. I think it's a pretty good sign when you can tip the car one side or the other. You can stay in that window. Here comes the Hendrick cars. Uh, Larson's coming to pit road, Regan. Clint Kyle Larson always quiet on the radio. No different today. Not very much from the driver's seat. Lots of updates from crew, crew chief Cliff Daniels, though, about when he is making time and where he's making time on the racetrack. Kevin Harvick in and out, so only the first five cars have not pitted. Check that. I think I see Byron, the leader, coming on to pit road. At lap 126, Byron is in. That'll hand the lead to Alex Bowman. Nope, he's right behind him. Oh. Bowman on pit road. Things are happening fast, Mike. <laughs> Jamie. Alex Bowman in the 48. He's been pretty quiet on the radio. That means this car is getting better and better. Definitely still on the tight side a little bit, but they've been able to make some gains. It'll be a four-tire stop for the 48 and the 24. He's just been so stout today. Air pressure adjustment once again and four tires for the 24. Good stuff. These guys have been on it today. And everybody else who would have assumed the lead has come to pit road. Haley, Blaney, and Almondinger. So that will complete this round of stops, but for Michael McDowell and Ricky Stenhouse, who are both trying to stretch their fuel mileage in hopes of a caution that would put the hit them back on the lead lap. Byron and Larson cycle back to the lead, and now they're almost three seconds apart. Yes, sir. It was interesting. We're following along with Larson there. Gained on him a little bit. Not much, but a little. Did it just a little bit before Byron. So with green flag stops among the leaders complete, we'll take a break from Las Vegas. William Byron back out front by two seconds. NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by the Credit One Bank NASCAR American Express Card. William Byron leading. Here's your aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, powering every lap, every mile, and every victory on the road ahead. Goodyear, more driven. It's going to be hard to be more driven than William Byron is this afternoon. He's led 120 laps out of 134. Nobody else has led 10. I don't know. Christopher Bell's looking pretty good. He's the big winner, I think, in that transition there. But I also am looking at Bubba Wallace. He's up to sixth. He was ninth going into that into that uh, pit stop. So he was complaining on the radio just a little bit. And we, we heard that, which tells me that they probably made a pretty good change on him. So... And he keeps getting that track position, Danica. He's just going to keep getting stronger. He'll like that car more. You get closer to the front, these cars wake up. They handle better. 
Both the front row cars stop, as does Chase Briscoe, as drivers uh, who were one lap down, hopeful of catching a caution and stayed out as long as they could, are now making their stops. Right there. That's the hardest thing to do is cross a wake. You see the 11, or excuse me, the one of Chastain really cut down in front of him, forced him to change his line, him being uh, Bubba Wallace right there behind him. As soon as he crossed that wake, that car took off, headed the wrong direction. Well, I tell you what, with these cars being so much more sensitive to that wake than they used to be, I mean, you can play with that. You can use that. I mean, you don't want to use up that card too early on. You don't want to play your, play your hand too quickly, but, you know, if you've got someone behind you, you that's right on you needed to get get some breathing room you can always just drift up just a little bit saw Kyle Busch there man I'm impressed that car took a beating he already said the wheel was off and they're still holding strong adjusting out of the situation bad situation but they're making good out of it now his lap times are only a tenth of a second uh, off of William Byron as far as best lap and three tenths off right at the moment so that's still quite competitive despite a pretty hard hit to the wall earlier absolutely you know and just talking about the strategy of how to get by somebody another way to play with that too is is that if you see that you're catching someone and you know what line they're running that you you run a different one you can draw them up you draw them up into a different lane get them out get them somewhere where they don't feel as comfortable and then take it from them tell you who's taking it's Larson's taking a step out of out of Byron's lead here, 30-45 he to 30-21. He did the same thing in the first run. I was paying attention to that. He was like two to three tenths quicker Kyle was than uh, the William Byron. But by the end of the run, he didn't have the long run speed. He was he was the gap closed, and he was maybe even a tenth slower. So it'll be interesting to see if he's able to keep that consistent gap all the way through this run. And it's a really good point. Takes me back to what he was saying. Cars working loose, too loose. If they can adjust into that, can he keep? moving forward no surprise William Byron has our Xfinity fastest lap of this race Joey Logano second Kyle Busch Kyle Larson Bubba Wallace are the fast five Tyler Reddick uh, worked his way from the back up to 11th place uh, then fell back into the pack a bit on pit stops and he's not made many gains since he has come up four positions since the restart takes me back these guys get adjusting on their cars everybody gets better it's harder to get up through the field after that first run everybody your, your competition gets stouter those passes they come fewer and farther between fifth place here you know one of the things that we used to see a lot of is when there was two cars racing each other and you were the third car back you they punched a really big hole we don't see that quite as much with just how much downforce comes off the third car um, but that was some good racing right there that bub is coming mike and legato might have got a piece of the wall right there thought he got Tough up day for it. him man starting yep. on the front he's not been going forward he's been only going backwards so sure looks like it yeah. right rear here's a look at it yep Lost the nose. It looked like he just lost the nose and just had nowhere to go. Yeah, I don't know if the track was dirty. He was really high. They got into some debris. Oh, they got into the, uh, he hit the wall hard. William Byron's now been out front for 129 laps. He leads Kyle Larson by 1.3 seconds with Christopher Bell third. <laughs> 147 laps complete. What Is that we, what boys do? Tough, tough boys company punch there. Boy, bo boys just punch each oh, other. Oh, it's coming back. Oh, yep, he got, got, him. <laughs> got him. Girls don't play that game. All right, Kyle Larson, eight tenths of a second off of William Byron's lead. Christopher Bell, eight and a half back. Alex Bowman, 8.8. .8. Bubba Wallace, the top five. Truex now sixth, Chastain seventh, Keslowski and Kyle Busch has taken ninth from Denny Hamlin. Watching Bell and Bowman for third place. It comes at one, two, three. Back in the show. I feel like we're seeing these Hendrick cars be really good on a long run, really nice and consistent. We're talking about obviously the micro differences between William Byron and Kyle Larson over the long run, but overall Hendrick is super strong on the full, on the long run. Bush and now drop a spot there, and he may have gotten the wall again. Up high, he seemed 
right of your screen, way too high, much like that nine car. Oh, that's just a kiss. <laughs> that's a heck of a save is what that is. Look at the debris and stuff flying off of it. Just barely. That's the one you come off of turn two and you go down the back straight and you just like take a deep breath and go, Whew, how did I get away with that one? The only thing you scared there is a paint job. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie. Well, Mike, before we went to break, we saw the 22 of Joey Logano get into the wall. He radioed to his team. Everything seems fine. They're not seeing any smoke, but he has had his hands full today. After starting on pole, he said rear security is just an issue. He just can't get enough grip. They made a wedge adjustment on the last stop, and guys, that's one of the first and only chassis adjustments I've seen down here today. I honestly think you heard Jamie just say rear stability. I think Danica going back to when he hit the wall, that's how he hit the wall. I think the car was loose and he didn't want to pull on that wheel. Turn. Couldn't afford to yeah. kind of just let it have its head and unfortunately got in the wall a little bit. Probably the lesser of the two evils. Hard decision to make. <laughs> so three Chevys in front of three Toyotas as we come to the close of stage number two. We're going to take you side by side once more. Research shows people remember ads with a catchy song. So to help you remember that Liberty Mutual customizes your home insurance, here's a little number you'll never forget. Did you know that Liberty Mutual Liberty customizes Mutual. Only pay for what you need. Only pay for what you need. Custom home insurance created for you all. Now the song is done back to living in your world. They're just gonna live in there? Yeah. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Remember college? Five hour energy got you through then. And now, we'll get you through again. Rediscover five hour energy. Ray Maliazzi here. When you need parts, eBay Motors ensures a guaranteed fit. Hey, Dave? Yep. Wait. How are those new wipers? They're small. Just go to eBay Motors where the check means a guaranteed fit. Let's ride. Much has changed over our 75 years. But the thing that never does, the anticipation, the holding of breath until that first green flag drops and the crazy journey begins all over again. If you could travel 75 years from now, you might not recognize much at all. But one thing will never change. That feeling you get when the race begins again. Dude, what are you doing? I'm protecting my car. That's too much work. WeatherTech is so much easier. Laser measured floor liners up here, seat protector and cargo liner back there. Nice. Out here, side window deflectors and mud flaps and the bump step to keep the bumper dent free. Cool. It's the best protection for your vehicle, new or pre-owned. Great, but where do I? Order weathertech.com. In just three days, real farmers. I don't think there's anything else I could do. Real women. I could see myself settling down here and raising kids. Holy moly. Search for real love. Mama's opinion, she's the one. Experience a genuine dating show. What's my heart saying right now? Get my rear end back in there and keep dancing with that pretty girl. Farmer Wants a Wife. Series premiere Wednesday on Fox. Only at Martinsville can you catch a weekend of bumper-to-bumper -bumper racing. Get your tickets today at martinsvillespeedway.com. Well, as you saw in side-by-side -side coverage, Kyle Larson erased William Byron's lead. And then when they started to work lap traffic, the gap opened up once again. It's now at nine-tenths of a second. Sure did. There's no question that 24 car, it's just way more maneuverable. I mean, I see getting into lap traffic, he's just picking them up and putting them down one by one. Larson has to be way more methodical about it. A little, little more trouble with the five car getting through traffic than William. Well, he was on him, but I, as I was saying just before the break that, you know, when two cars are nose to tail and then there's a third car that the leader's catching, obviously, those two cars create so much dirty air for that third car and you see Larson drop back. It's a bit more of a penalty now. William Byron started outside pole. He has led all but 13 laps today. 
At the other end of the top 10, Kevin Harvick appears for the first time today in the top 10 as you watch eighth place, Brad Keselowski and Denny Hamlin. Harvick's definitely carrying the torch for SHR right now. He's reasonable, but the other cars are just, you know, really struggling. Really struggling. <laughs> I mean, the next car, you've got Almirola in a 17th, and then, uh, you know, you got Briscoe two laps down, unfortunately. Priest one lap down. Struggling. That's tough. It's tough in an organization when you're struggling. You know, we've all been there where you don't know what it is. You can't quite put your finger on it. And it sometimes can be even more confusing when one driver is so much further ahead because you don't always point to a problem as much. Um, but there's a lot of smart guys on that team. Still early in the season, right? These guys are all figuring things out uh, still. You can't forget that. You come to a mile and a half track. This is the first mile and a half track that, you know, you're going to see a lot of norm out of this place. You need to be good here. This is a report card, in my opinion. A lot of teams look at this, and they're going to be readjusting. You know some of these guys came with different setups. You know, if you have four cars, why would you come this early in the season, um, you know, without spreading around a little bit and trying to figure some things out? I'm sure some of those those are going on within these organizations. You see that six car? I'm telling you, Keselowski, he's impressing me. He has turned this thing around. They struggled last year, got his teeth kicked in, didn't like that. He digs down. Coming to three to go in the stage, Jamie. Brad Keselowski running eighth right now. And but to your point, you know, Brad told me this is a great place. It's a great test to know what you have. And they want to be better than last year. They ended last week in seventh. He's been running top ten all race today. A little bit loose, but manageable. But another thing, he has a different spotter here today. TJ Majors, his normal spotter, is homesick, never made the trip out. So his brother, Brian Keselowski, is spotting for his brother for the first time ever. That's cool. Yep. Very cool. Happy for Brad. Uh, you know, again, that was a big step. It Brad's is. Brad's always made bold moves in, in anything when he does and uh, has the confidence to chase after it. He struggled last year, and he's he's turning the page. I'm a believer. They did, but, you know, you've got to take into account it's not just going to a new team. It's owning the team, too. Like, there's a huge vested interest in turning it around and keeping your head in it and keep working. And Brad's a super talented guy, really nice guy. And I think that, obviously, we can see what happens when you have a passion and a big vested interest in making it work. Last lap, stage two. It's like William Byron is going to sweep the stages for the first time in his career. Twice previously here in Las Vegas, a driver has swept the stages and ended up going to victory lane. Definitely a little easier when there aren't any cautions. You know, you're out front. You don't have a whole lot of yellows to shake things up. William Byron takes that second stage again. Kyle Larson this time four tenths back. Alex Bowman, 6.8. If you're William Byron and company, you're going, shh, Danny, don't say anything about them cautions. Hear everybody else. Yeah, but we want to see them, Clint. They're going to come. See it. We want to see them get you shaken watch. up. Kevin Harvick gets the 10th place and final stage point in stage two. William Byron has swept both stages. Wednesday on FS1, the Big East Tournament tips off at MSG with a huge triple header starting at 3 Eastern when Butler takes on St. John's. Then you'll see DePaul versus Seton Hall, followed by Georgetown Villanova. That's Wednesday only on FS1 and the Fox Sports app. Two stages complete. What did we win? I'm wondering the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. To I Las won Vegas. time with you guys. All right. <laughs> here we go. So I wondered why Kyle Larson said this morning, William Byron's the fastest car here. He and Joey Logano have the speed. And boy, he's been unstoppable and unbeatable. He's led all but what, about 15 laps? Absolutely, Mike. I mean, if you're going to win this race, you're going to have to do it uh, passing that 24 car. But I mean, a lot of goes into this that, that we got a pit stop coming. All you have to do is beat him out. 
he's seen nothing but uh, you know clean track in front of him this whole race. If you can beat him out, get him in dirty air, put him in a situation he hasn't, maybe that's how you get it done. The five car, his teammate, extremely fast as well. And Alex Bowman, third as well. Oh, they've yeah, run one, two, three too. by the end of the by the end of the run. They've been really, really strong. But let's look at Bubba Wallace. He's in sixth right now. He's climbing slowly but surely. Um, another pit stop coming. He gained a few spots on that last transition. Uh, Martin Truex Jr. and Denny Hamlin. They're also creeping up there. So it's going to get interesting. Once these pit stops start coming, I mean, everything uh, is, is on the table. You know, again, one of these Toyotas gets in the middle of those Hendrick camp, mixes that thing up. That's all it's going to take. Well, and that one could be Christopher Bell we haven't mentioned. Absolutely. He's also been right up, uh, up there near the front as the pit crews get ready for the stage two ending stop. The best Ford has been Brad Keselowski around eighth place, although Kevin Harvick has just uh, gotten his way into the top ten. Here are the stage points earned today with William Byron having a maximum day. Sure is, and it's no, you know, look at Ross Chastain, one, three of the first four comes in here, still 12 points. I mean, these are so important, folks. You cannot tell that story enough. You know, you look at Truex, you look at six points at the end of the season. These all add up. You need every single one you, you can get each and every week, and these teams do everything they can do to get them. Temperature in the high 50s here. The flagman has not had to wave the flag today. Uh, Mother Nature has been doing it for him. All he has to do is hold that stick out and uh, <laughs> see, the flag just takes care of itself. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> Well, Glory's barely holding also, on to that back straightaway, too. He also hasn't had to throw it for any other cautions other than these stages, which That's has right. been made it a very fast race, 168 laps done out of 267. That's a good thing because throwing the flag is just a figure of speech, after all. Here we go. So many are. All right, Regan, pit stops. Mike right, Christopher Bell in the 20 car was close. One run to go. This run, though, the report from the driver is the car got too loose. Needs an adjustment for that. The five of Kyle Larson. Tighter overall the entire second stage, according to him. And he said that they're trying to figure out where they think the track's going to go as the sun gets a little bit brighter right now. Told to save fuel immediately when he leaves the road, Jamie. Alex Bowman in the 48. A little bit tight at the end of the run like he's been all day. But he said, I can make this car do anything I want. These Hendrick drivers getting more confident as they go. 24 took a little bit bigger swing just to help him not get so tight in lap traffic. William Byron leads the field out of the pits. Here's our race off pit road sponsored by Ram. No change in the front four but Ross Chastain picks up two of the three spots that he lost during the running of stage two compared to the end of stage one. No surprise there. That one car <laughs> that boys mean business when you get them on pit road. 169 laps complete in Las Vegas. Welcome back to our race day studio. Shannon Spake, Jamie McMurray, and the day has belonged to Hendrick Motorsports so far. Top three right now. That guy right there, William Byron in the 24 car, has led more than 150 laps on the day. Welcome in as we get you ready for stage three out there in Las Vegas. Let's take a look at how things have gone down so far in the desert. Of course, all eyes were on hometown boy Kyle Busch coming into today's race, pulling triple duty this weekend. Oh, and turn two's been tough. You see contact with the wall. It looked like initially this wasn't going to affect his car, but as the race is went on we see him fading farther back into the field yeah it, there's only been two cautions so far yeah Tyler Reddick though Shannon started this first stage incredible 34th all the way up to 11th you see he's been able to make the top side work no si surprise to see Tyler Reddick go into the front absolutely moving fast through the field Larry Max said he was gonna give him a hug maybe maybe he needed he a, hug. a hug yeah the race has really been all about William Byron though when in uh, stage one obviously runs well in stage two um, Hendrick Motorsports you says been fast what about Chris Buescher and, and Daniel Swartz? You see Suarez have to check up out of the gas. He gets into the outside of Busher. Busher into turn two wall as well. That's collected many cars today. Yeah, we've seen those guys get loose and oh, get and all then by themselves. Poor Josh Berry. The Hendrick Motorsports having such a good day. He's <laughs> filling in for Chase Elliott. Car got tight. He gets into the wall. And then our pole setter, Joey Logano, gets into the wall. Not in turn two. This is in turns three and four. Be anxious to see. He's able to finish 14th in stage two. But how much damage has been done to that 22 car? Uh, the stage winner, William Byron. He's won stage one and stage Look. two. We talk about those Chevys out front, but you mentioned the Fords. 
What are you seeing out of them so far? Well, Ford and qualifying looks great. Obviously, Joey Logano's on the pole. Ryan Blaney was in third, but they have faded back. The best one in stage two was Brad Keselowski in ninth. All right, let's get you back up to Mike as we get ready for stage three. Thanks, Shannon. Uh, one bit of an incident on pit road. Kyle Busch uh, unable to get out of his pit due to the positioning of Tyler Reddick's car in the pit just in front of him. So uh, that sends Busch back to 15th. Uh, Reddick will be 16th as they come to the choose here. And let's first hear from Reddick's team. You pointed out a little better yet. It looked like things started locking up, coming in, as you were giving the eight guys room. I mean, that was the right thing to do for them, but I think they start themselves by stopping deep. Do I have this? this my, my bumper's allowed to be outside the box behind me, right? Yeah, we're going to stop the way shorter. So they'll make adjustments. Keep that from happening again. Here's uh, the view we have of it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Not even close. It hung out right there. Reddick was hung out way too far. Kyle Busch couldn't get out. Yep. So William Byron again elects the inside against Kyle Larson. Bowman and Truex, Chastain and Bell, Suarez and Harvick, Hamlin. Wallace, the top 10, as they approach the Geico restart zone for stage three. Green flag, 94 to go. A little more even this time. Larson on the outside. Big push by Truex. Still can't hold on. William Byron is so strong on that bottom. Back to the point, Danica. Been there all day. <laughs> of course, you got his teammate Kyle Larson back there on the outside, just working, trying to get in behind him where he's been all day. Looks like he's going to do it. How about Danny way up on the outside? Making some hay here. He's looking to the outside of Chastain. Chastain shuts the door. And Bubba, Bubba Wallace flew up right through the middle, up to sixth place. Look at the momentum. Denny Hamlin lost. Chastain moved up, made that block, made him check up. Lost two positions. Harvick there on the inside in the uh, red, white, and black number four. Suarez in the middle. And uh, Bubba's still coming. He's going after Christopher Bell for fifth. Still with you. Still there, gap of four. Man, he hasn't been happy with that car, but I'm telling the old 23 hot rods pretty quick. That's just kind of his M.O. I feel like he's got a little bit of a chip kind of a vibe to him. So I'm not sure Whoa. how many times I've really heard the super positive. But uh, and as a driver, you're trying to be critical, too. You want to talk about what's not right to make it better. But there's no way around it. I mean, Bubba pushes really hard. And that's why if he's got a good car, you see him in the front. Bubba was 10th before the choose. Took the green ninth. And here he is in fifth. This can be a really frustrating position to be in. When you're side by side, just end after end after end, someone usually gets a little irritable. And it's going to draw Daniel Suarez and the rest of those cars right up to them. And by irritable, it just might mean coming down on his door. It might mean drifting up by the guy on the inside, up the track a little bit getting really tight down the straightaway, just trying to kind of intimidate him, just trying to kind of tick him off a little bit. There you go. Like see, just get, you get a little close like that. Yep. Starting to get frustrated. Yep. See Christopher Bell getting frustrated. Wanting to get by him. Slowing us both up here. Let's go. It is. Uh, yeah, you see Suarez just closing that gap. Yeah, he's going to get, watch this. You're going to see some frustration coming. He needs to get up there. Drive it in hard. Either one or the other needs to figure this out. Just like you said, Danica, Suarez is coming. Speaking of Suarez, peak in the middle. he's we'll on the move. Gonna get a shove. Good pit clear. stop. Huge pit stop. Look at that. Pitcher right back in the money. Changes your whole game right here. Putting that 99 car up front. Clean air. It's just going to keep getting better and better for him. Oh, whoa. Reddick all over the place. If he wasn't in the wall, he was everything but. 
That was laid off a of turn four, too. I wonder if that was one of those tight to loose moments like yeah. we were talking about earlier. Definitely think that's what I saw, Danica. Push, snap, loose right there at the end. Wallace trying to retake fifth from Daniel Suarez, who got underneath him. You watch. Man, that's all it takes. We've been talking about these Hendrick guys. Everybody, you put somebody that hadn't been up there all day long. They've been working on their cars, mired back in traffic. Put this 99 car up front in that clean air. Whole different car he's driving now. Regan? Mike, just an update on the 23 of Bubba Wallace. Been fighting some tire chatter with that race car all day long. Two stops ago, though, they got it much closer with an adjustment. He told the team, go back half of that last adjustment, and we're going to be good. That's evident right now. He's having the best part of his day at this moment. Sure is. <laughs> Takes it right back to what he said, though. Take a big swing at this, but don't go too far. Don't get me too loose. I don't need to be tank swamp being in trouble here. Kind of half of the inside. And that's what happened after Kyle Busch got uh, blocked in trying to get out of his pits ends up in this group racing for 14. I don't know who I'm picking to come out ahead on this one. They're all pretty darn good. Gonna get tight. Whoa. Oh, caution, uh, caution. Logano slides to the grass down the front straight away as caution waves. Sure did. He's going to be frustrated with that. He had the run. He has the position. But the hardest thing is to be that three-wide situation that Keselowski was in. He starts to lose the nose. It comes to a head right there in the end. Logano in the wall. But as I said, Clint, I don't know who I'm going to pick to come out ahead. They're all awesome drives. They're all pushing all the way to the edge all the time. Well, they did. Competitive. They, they got, push it all the way to the exit of turn four. They went over that edge. Well, we'd seen earlier where it's, this racetrack just wasn't wide enough for Joey Logano. You know, he's had a rough day, you know, starting on the pole to be now obviously spun in the track after uh, after dropping back. This is not what they're looking for. Well, we had 20 cars on the lead lap back to uh, Corey LaJoy who got the free pass at the end of stage two. Logano's teammate, Austin Sindrick, will get the free pass on this. The first caution for cause that we've had today. Here's another look. Well, who's going to give? Look at this list lineup. You got Kyle <laughs> Busch in the eight, Keselowski, net six, and Logano, all three very aggressive. Just running out of real estate. Logano come yeah. down. I'm going to say he uh, didn't stay on that wall. I no. don't want to put blame on him. That's three cars going for the same spot. I saw Brad come up. I, I, I differ. It you want to go back Brad to that? Came up in the corner. Well, we'll, we'll look again. Up. I saw this. Joey come off the wall <laughs> down toward him. But. He did, but he has to do that. If you rim ride all the way around there, you get tight and put yourself in the wall. I think it's just, hey, just like Danica said, though, that's three very aggressive drivers going for the same real estate, and one of them lost. That was Joey Logano. Man, so close for Stenhouse Jr. right there. Almost got into him. That would have ended both of their days. I mean, this is the kind of thing we see happen off a of turn four here. I mean, this was kind of the same thing that happened last last time with Larson and Bubba, and we saw what we saw what happened after that. Did you see that airtime right there? Went for a ride. We'll see how durable that car is. Now. I want to see this right rear. Look at that right rear. He hit that wall pretty hard. Might have bent that toe link. If not broke it. Well, we agree on one thing. Yeah, there they are. The corner. They were all three wide, and Kyle Busch had nothing to do with this. <laughs> right? Yeah, well, yeah, he did. He was one of them three wide. He was okay. just the winner of it. But you see him replacing that toe link, just like I was saying. I thought I saw that uh, right rear moving around. It's like they're going to get that replaced. Need to get the, uh, um, you see underneath the car, this thing right here is on a detent that helps the car from uh, getting airborne. It's going to reset that right there. Boom. Larry Mack, how does this change things? Well, we could see a mixed bag here, Mike. We only ran nine laps, and we have 19, 20 drivers on the lead lap. You still would have to pit again, even pitting here for fuel. But this may be a good time to get some fresh tires on that thing, get her full of fuel where you don't have to put as much in it near the end of this, this run here. Go back to my Liberty Mutual race strategy. Maybe a good time to try just right side tires if you have several at pit. Love that, Larry. Let's shake things up. Time to roll the dice. Where we at, baby? Las Vegas. Tough break for Joey Logano as they were three wide coming off the corner with Kyle Busch and Brad Kozlowski. Dug in really hard on that left front. Wonder how much damage is done with the bodywork there. 
All right, Regan. Mike, the five car Kyle Larson told his team he doesn't really need too much right now. Felt like they were better than the second stage where he was just a little on the tight side. The call from Cliff Daniels was to put four tires on it right here. And the 23 at Bubba Wallace, we just reported about how it was getting a little bit better, but the report when the yellow came out, struggling with front grip, a two out of five on the number scale for him right now. Jamie? of Alex Bowman, a little free over the bumps, starts to snug up a little bit as he runs a four-tire stop here. His teammate, the 24, said he's a little bit free in one and two, but it's coming to him, and he stays out. 48, good stop. Well, you called it, Larry. Somebody was going to gamble. Who was that? 11 Denny Hamley two. wasn't scared. Two tires. It's like Eric Jones has trouble. I'm wondering if that's a loose wheel. He's going to back up. Don't go on that racetrack with a loose wheel or wheel off. You're going to get... A, a vacation for the crew chief and tire changer. So we'll be back to update here at Jones' story as he backs up all the way to his pit. Caution out for Joey Logano's big slide through the ball field on the front straightaway. Welcome back. We are under caution for Joey Logano spin, and it's the time of day when we do the Credit One Bank ones to watch. I wonder who got to pick first this week. Danica, I'm sorry. I love this because I get to pick first. You know who I'm going to pick, Byron. He won three of the prior four after leading over 100 laps. He is my guy. William Byron, the 24 cars going all the way. Clint, I'm watching that 99 of Daniel Suarez. He has started 2023 with back-to-back -to -back top 10s. He only has one top 10 in Las Vegas, but that pit stop on lap 169, a 9.9, .9, that's what's got him inside the top five. My one to watch, I'm still sticking with him, Kyle Larson. There's 80 laps to go, and if anybody's going to use the track, it's going to be Kyle Larson. I think he's going to take it on the top. Danica, I'm going to go with another Hendrick car. The 48 of Alex Bowman one year ago won this race on two tires. He's not going to have to do that to win this year. That car is fast, and he's going to keep it up front this final stage. It took Kevin Harvick 155 laps to make it into the top 10. Let's see what the closer has for them in this closing stage in his number four Ford. And remember, Clint. It's the Credit One Bank ones to watch, not necessarily the one to win. Well, hey, once a competitor, always a competitor, buddy. Right. We're here to win. <laughs> Joey Logano uh -oh. ran out of time on the damaged vehicle policy clock, the seven minutes, so he is in the garage, and the pole sitter is done for the day. Dang it. Uh, tough day, but, you know, man, he might not be so bummed after what's been happening, so... Go to the go to the drawing board, figure it out. Obviously, they got a fast car. Just got to figure out how to make it fast for the whole race. Such a tough till, uh, pill to swallow. Joey Logano sits on the pole, was good yesterday. Cut, wakes up this morning with huge hope, thinking you're going to dominate this race. Unfortunately, you're the first one out. So Denny Hamlin to the inside on the choose. Okay, we were the only taker uh, on that little plan, but it's that it's nine stops here, clean air, so get ready for a good restart. Yep. So that little plan being two tires. Yes, sir. And buddy, you got to do something. <laughs> hey, you're not going to follow them all day long. Let's let's put this thing out front and see how she does. And these are the moments, though, when you you stand behind your crew chief and your crew chief stand behind the driver and you kind of you're in it together. He's like, hey, man, look, nobody took it like we took it, but you've got to take a chance. And um, yeah, this will be interesting. Pretty clear you're not going to make an adjustment in air pressure. Anything you're going to find to pass that 24 and the 5, you'd already done it. Let's make a gamble here. They did it. Let's see if it pays off. Got three of them Hendrick boys right on him, though. It's going to be important to get a good jump. Protect that bottom. Do not let Larson to your inside. And then try to get up in front of them down the back straightaway. Don't be door-to-door -door with them off of two. That's what Hamlin needs to do. He's surrounded by Hendrick. And he's surrounded by four fresh tires. That's yeah. right. Great point. What's worse? That track positions everything. Clean air, and he has it. He's going to have to work hard to keep it. 78 laps to go as they come back to green. That's what he needed right there. That outside line, Bowman doesn't have everybody with him. Got a big push by Larson. Best case scenario for Denny Hamlin. Three wide right behind him. Truex to the inside, making it three wide and making it stick. Man, look at the run Bowman wow. has on the outside. 
And Hamlin has enough grip to hold the lead. Who saw who saw Truex coming into that play like that? He did. <laughs> good plan, good strategy. That five car slid up, opened that door, and he was there for the taking. Harvick up the inside, grabbed a couple of spots up to eighth. Wow, very close. Man, Truex and Larsa just about got together. That man likes his gamble. He better run. They're coming, Danica. Well, we didn't see there be too, too much fall off from the beginning to the end of the run. So, you know, taking two tires at this point in time, there's still quite a bit of race to go, but I think it was a good gamble. See Bowman lurking on that outside. This is a guy, when I woke up this morning, I thought was going to have a shot at it. Talked to his crew chief this morning. Was getting in inside his head a little bit. I liked his strategy. I think that, uh, you know, I believe that Blake Harris, man, I'm telling you, this is a new opportunity for him. He's got a good driver. This could be their day. Kyle Larson get a big run off of turn two down the back straight on Alex Bowman going to the inside. Will he pull it off? Yes, yeah, all you want to hear is a driver. Clear, clear, clear. He's going to take that line from him, make the pass. That all came to momentum loss off the of two, though. Bowman did. just, you know, got too close to that 11, got in his wake, had to lift. Larson pounced on it. And Tyler Reddick is coming. He just came down the front straightaway, and he just about had his left side tires in the grass. He was so low, but he is picking up spots. And Reddick back in the top 10, now up to eighth place. It's go time. Bay windows open. These guys are elbows up. The aggression is going to pick up. From the bottom to the top around Bubba Wallace. Guys. Larson all over the bumper of the 11. Bottom, Whoa. top, moving up. Away, loose, almost lost it. In Hi. that wake again, just like we talked about with Bowman. He's going to get a bad run down the back, but I'm telling you, it's his one and two that's given him the run. He made a pass the one time. The next lap, he got a huge run down the back straightaway. Just about made it happen down the front straight. Larson's hooked up right now. Well, he made that big cut to the bottom between turns one and two and suddenly had no air on the nose. <laughs> yeah, but look at him. He's going away. down the front straight right on Denny again. He's the same place nearly that he was the last lap. After that moment, he's going to get to his outside around one and two. Look at this. That's exactly what he did. He did not cross that wake this time. Learned from that mistake before. Entered high. Momentum. Here it goes. Laying on your door, laying on your door, still there. A little room now, one lane to you, still outside, one lane to you, still outside. As a driver, you want to hear that, laying on your door versus not. I always wanted to know how close are they? How much room do I have? How much air is on the side of my car? Now, I don't never want to hear laying on your door, but that no. was pretty much back <laughs> on the straightaway. Once you get to that corner, courtesy went a long ways, got off of him. Here comes Chastain. He got a big run through turn two. He's in fourth place, right on Bowman's bumper. Little gap back that's now filled by Truex. And the front seven are nose to tail Look or side by side. Here comes that Reddick on the outside, just like you were talking about, Mike. Big time run off the of four. He's making Tyler Reddick is making that that three and four up high line work for him. He's keeping the momentum loose keeping... in the wall. Ball, oh, not much. Just like you were saying, though, yep. got too high in one and two. It was only working in Looked three like and four. He only caught it with the rear bumper, Clint. I don't think he damaged the car there. Heck of a save. Didn't slow him down a bit. Right back to the top in three and four. So <laughs> he was sixth and is now tenth as Byron. That's a pretty Deepest good save. in the field, Byron has been all day trying to climb back up. Man, I didn't mean, wow, look at the pushing. Dude, you're seeing a lot of aggression right now. I feel like we're watching the last, like, 25 laps of a race instead of the last 75 laps of a race. Big time slide up in front. Truex slid right up in front of Chastain. That's not going to, he ain't happy about that. Oh, no. That's as close as it gets off of two. That was almost catastrophic for both cars. And now it's Harvick down on the bottom of the racetrack, up to sixth. Not quite clear. After the lift, keep that thing on the bottom. Here comes the momentum. Bubba Wallace really tucked up. That is about as close as I've seen a third car with two wide run. I 
feel like that's a sign that his car is feeling pretty stable. He backs off them in three. Yeah, but look at this run that he's going to get. Four. Yep, here he look comes. Look at this run. That three and four high is working right now. Something's shifted. I feel like a lot of guys are getting huge runs off of four right now when they keep that momentum up on the top. I think that's just going to become more and more of a player in this race. Seven mile per hour difference between the two uh, cars there as that pass was made. All right, catch your breath because the top 12 right now are just about single file. Uh, let's go back to 10th place, Ryan Blaney, Daniel Suarez. A little slide there by Blaney. Kyle Busch on the outside of Keselowski for 12. Right there. So things have settled down at the front for the moment. So we'll take our last full break under green flag racing for today. Kyle Larson leading Denny Hamlin by eight tenths of a second. As things get heated here in Las Vegas. Sixty one laps to go in Las Vegas. Here's today's big move sponsored by pods. Kyle Larson coming to the front against Denny Hamlin. Things got very close between those two on a couple of occasions before Larson finally sealed the deal assumed the lead and is now driven off by one point one seconds. That's your pods big move. Taking the leads always a big move. <laughs> it's a good mustache. That guy had a good mustache. He did. He let no Movember go on and on. 23 cars on the lead lap. And about eight one lap down led by Michael McDowell from 24th on back. Kyle Larson. One out of every three mile and a half track has seen him in victory lane recently. Let's check with Jamie. Joey Logano out of the race and Joey what exactly happened from your perspective when you were three wide with the six and the eight. Yeah I just got squeezed up in the wall. It's, it's what it is. I, I don't know what to say about it. Just uh, running three wide there for a lap or a lap and a half there. Um, just got squeezed up. Um, kind of a bummer. You know Penzo 400 driving the Penzo car you want to have a good run and we just weren't real good. You know we qualified well obviously and just we ran around 12 most of the day. So we missed stage points, and the bad day got worse, unfortunately. So uh, we move on, go to the next one. Joey Logano's 20th career start at Las Vegas, his first DNF. Won the pole, but won't be around at the finish. Kyle Larson, our race leader. Uh, there's a look back, go all the way to the bottom of that pylon for Christopher Bell, uh, who has been a top five car much of the day. He restarted top 10, but he is reporting a vibration and has now dropped down toward the tail end of the lead lap. Yeah, huge blow for him. I don't know if that's like Blaney, you know, a really tight condition leading to this vibration they talk about or a loose wheel. It'd be a hard thing to try to diagnose from on top of that box. After hearing Blaney, you know, not once but two or three times saying this vibration is worse, worse, but not a wheel coming loose, falling off. I feel like you'd almost be comforted by this point in time, though. If your vibration has been there long enough, the worst is when it comes on. But as enough time goes, you think to yourself, okay, this isn't uh, this isn't like a race-threatening situation. This is just something we would like to diagnose later. If you're Blaney, if you're Christopher Bell, and if you haven't, man, he's wow, he is in the wall again. Man, he is running up high, and he is he is he is. Um, as I said before we went to break, Glenn, I looked at you and I was like, he's yeah. up there. He's, he's being a man up there. Like, he is he, definitely he the wall not once. scared of it. He never got off the wall. He's still been on the wall, and he looks like he's still liking the wall. <laughs> that's uh, that's some bravery by a driver, and, you know, he's a young, aggressive driver, and that's that's very clear. Let's get an update on Tyler Reddick. Regan. Well, Mike, you talk about a young, brave, aggressive driver. He had that moment a little while back in turns one and two. Team said he never mentioned it at all on the radio. Only thing with that race car is just a touch free. That looked more like a lot free to me when it happened. <laughs> yes. yeah. yeah. Wow, he didn't even say anything. Oh. I guess it spoke for itself to some degree. Here's another look. Wow. 
<laughs> Chris uh, Buescher just made a pit stop. He was one of a number of cars, about eight or nine of them, that had just taken the wave around on the last caution. Fifty three laps to go. We want to be back for you full screen with green flag pit stops. So we're going to take you Fox side by side with Larson leading by one point two over Denny Hamlin. For 46 years straight more of you have trusted Ford F series trucks to help save the day. Stretch the weekend. Haul or tow just about anything anywhere. That's because they're built Ford tough. And it's why Ford F-Series are America's best-selling trucks 46 years straight. And for that, we thank you. Because this isn't just about our capability. It's about yours. I can't believe this is how you kids talk to your friends. This is talking. Did you have a nice day? Look at the size of these butterfly shrimp. Ginormous. Butterfly shrimp? What? Now she's talking. RPMs raise your BPMs, then get up and go. Go turn some heads. Go turn a wrench. Napa has America's largest network of parts and care, here to keep you firing on all cylinders. Verizon Frontline is the advanced network for first responders on the front lines. Built to prioritize first responders. Built for extreme conditions. Built for the most reliable 5G network in America. Verizon is the number one network choice in public safety. Because when seconds count and lives are on the line, the people we rely on need technology they can rely on. From the network America relies on. to go this was Tyler Reddick fighting that car to keep it off the wall from the Monster Energy Camp hard at work number one thing I saw is his eyes yep. did you see him not look up in the mirror he looked in that camera that's something that, that man I am just not used to seeing somebody looking down at a camera not up in that mirror all right, Christopher Bell finishes his stop. Remember, he had a vibration. Denny Hamlin is now in, Regan. Like Denny came over the radio a couple laps ago and said it's getting tighter as we run. Chris Gapehart, when he was in the middle of 3-4, said this time, this time, they pit early. Every pick crew now getting ready to make their moves on pick road here. Now, Hamlin was uh, four-tenths of a second off the lead when he pits. We'll compare that once this round of green flag stops is completed. Regan? Kyle Larson on pit road. He has been very quiet as he has been all day long, but in particular this run. The main thing he's been getting is coaching for Cliff Daniels now that he's out front to save the car because it's completely different up there in terms of the wear on the tires. Jamie? Martin Trex Jr. in the 19 had some pretty decent stops today. He said he needs help turning through the corners and overall just needs some more front grip. Calling for a four tire stop here as you see Kyle Bush finish his stop. Kevin Harvick. Uh, completes his service. He's out. Kyle Bush is in. Dylan is in. And more. And here comes William Byron as well. Regan. The one car Ross Chastain. A solid day along today, but he's just been building tight. Every run he just complains about it building a little bit too tight as they go. Jamie? William Byron led 173 laps today. Said he's just a little bit tight there, but he was optimistic. It was going to get better as they ran. Tyler Reddick gets four, and he is away. Eric Jones, Noah Gregson, Eric Almirola all on pit road. Here comes Bubba Wallace, Regan. 
Bubba Wallace steadily been moving forward all day long. Car is still too tight right now, though. He can't be aggressive with the front end through the corners like he wants to be. Daniel Suarez finishing up his stop. Justin Haley in. Almondinger in. So that will leave Bowman, Blaney, Kozlowski, and Priest on the racetrack. Here's Bowman on pit road. And Blaney with him. Regan. Like the 12 of Ryan Blaney has been working on that car all day long. It was not good at all early. Still doesn't like it tight with the front of the race car, but they have made some steady gains. Jamie. Alex Bowman in 48 just led his first laps of the day. That's two on the board for him. A four tire stop. Tight everywhere now. That's kind of been his complaint all day, but the car overall pretty good. Chase Briscoe, Ryan Priest on pit road, B.J. McLeod. That leaves just Brad Keselowski. You know, we're hearing everybody talk about tight, 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 tight. And this last pit stop, or you think it might be the last pit stop, it's going to be so critical for that crew chief. How big of a swing are you going to take at it? And then how aggressive as a driver are you going to convey that? So if Keselowski can catch a caution, only eight cars would be on the lead lap. And that is the idea behind staying out uh, to the end of this fuel window is hoping to catch somebody else's yellow and trap a bunch of people one lap down. Absolutely. And, and let me, on the flip side of that conversation, Hamlin, right? Hamlin tried to short pit him a little bit, didn't gain enough. The five cars still out in front as far as that conversation goes. Keselowski's still your leader. But without that caution you speak of, Mike, Larson's going to assume the lead again. And let's face it, it's not a, it's not, probably not a good gamble. Eh, there hasn't nope. been so many yellows. Well, he was 15th before the pit stop cycle started. Uh, J.J. Yaley's doing a pass through for too fast on pit road. And uh, Noah Gregson's dash must be set differently than everybody else's as Keselowski comes to pit road uh, because Gregson has been nabbed for speeding for the third time today. Turn two. There is Larson threading the needle between a couple of lap cars, and he's going to be your leader. Very tight needle. <laughs> that was very tight. There's Keselowski on pit road. Jamie? Keselowski pitting from the lead. A three-time winner here in Las Vegas. Day has been pretty good. He was on the free side early on in this race. Four-tire stop. You see actually a chassis adjustment. It looked like they made there and some air pressure as well for the six. So he's away, pitted as the leader, and with the pit cycle complete, we should have more than 20 cars on the lead lap for this run to the finish with 40 to go. And that caution sure helped on that conversation out a lot, Mike. Without that caution coming out, giving those guys a chance to get on that lead lap, take the wave around, man save some of their days it's that that would be a whole different game so hamlin was the first to pit in this sequence he was hmm. four tenths of a second back when he pitted he is now 1.9 back after the completion of this pit stop round good gamble good gamble just not enough it wasn't enough of a, a, a difference there in her lap times and i think that that kind of takes me back to this cloud cover the cool conditions these speeds are very very fast now, the one driver who really gained on this round was Christopher Bell, who had a vibration and pitted from 20th. Bell is now in 12th place. There's his number 20. He is fourth among the Toyotas, 12th overall. So with 38 laps to go, we're going to take our final side-by-side -side pit stop under green. With Kyle Larson leading Denny Hamlin now by 2.3 seconds. Imagine yourself in a new Toyota. Yeah. Sick. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Did you know that every new Toyota comes with Toyota Care? A two-year or 25,000-mile maintenance plan and roadside assistance. That's the value you can expect from Toyota. Ready, set, go get your Toyota today. Toyota, let's go places. I need to try it first. Yeah. 
Wednesday, it's DC Superheroes to the Rescue. Grab your tights and cape and let's get to it. We've got all the makings of a blockbuster with three new costume crusaders. Whoa. A Hollywood romance. Gargoyle, you stole my heart. It's been a while since I had a crush on this show. And a surprise twist ending. Go! Don't miss DC Superheroes Night on an all-new Masked Singer this Wednesday on Fox. Great seats, am I right? You got this, Carlos! Thanks, Advance. Like Advance. I'm the number one fan of Advance Auto Parts, and I am here for the free battery tests. Yes! 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 And free die-hard battery installations. Let's go! Or when they put on new wiper plates. In the rain! I see we have a new fan. Yeah, but I'm still number one, though, right? No, no, seriously, I I'm still number one? Still number one. You think it'll ever stop raining? This is how we advance. Kids are so expensive, Dad. Now Katie needs braces. Maybe try switching your car insurance to Progressive. You can save hundreds. I don't know, Dad. Maybe try switching your car insurance to Progressive. You could save hundreds. It's a great idea, TV Dad. But I said the exact same thing. Someday when you're a father, you'll understand. I'm his father. It's not a competition. Listen to your TV Dad. Drivers who switch and save with Progressive save nearly $700 on average. The action doesn't get much closer than a weekend at Richmond Raceway. Just 10 minutes from downtown, this track packs it in. Get your tickets now at richmondraceway.com. Next Sunday, NASCAR's West Coast Swing concludes in the Sonoran Desert in Phoenix. Race day starts 2 p.m. Eastern on FS1 and then continues on Fox right up until the green flag on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Here's your Coca-Cola family of drivers. But Denny Hamlin now third, Daniel Suarez 11th, Austin Dillon 26th, and pole sitter Joey Logano got up and into the wall and out of the race. Two Toyotas, Truex and Hamlin, fighting for third place, about four and a half seconds behind leader Kyle Larson. I think this is a good result here for Hamlin and Truex. I think this is a solid race for them. Crept up from the beginning, got in the mix pretty solidly by the middle, and here they are in third and fourth. That'll be a lot to build on. Absolutely, and, and a slow start to the weekend for all the Toyotas. Didn't really show up yesterday in practice, weren't all that impressive. Um, you know, Bell was, was decent. Uh, Gibbs was, was obviously in the hunt for the qualifying, but other than that, collectively, Toyota right. really wasn't a, a, a much of a show yesterday. Definitely big turnaround for them. Truex, Hamlin, breaking up that Hendrick bunch, right? Thanks to Denny for wearing our uh, driver's eye cam this weekend and to Coca-Cola for the pictures from the number 11. Clint, does that put you back in the car? I mean, when I see that camera view, it puts me in the car and I can feel it. So for the fans watching at home, this is very accurate to the visual that we have. This feels so real. Well, these cars are way more rigid than the cars that Danica and I drove. Now watch as he goes, well, if we Get back on here. As he goes through uh, one and two, it'll show you just how much rougher it is in the bumps down there in one and two than three and four. So pretty smooth down here. Track smooth, no tunnel, no bumps. Pretty, pretty wheel, as they call Holding it. Holding a pretty, pretty wheel. wheel. There's the camera <laughs> that you saw Reddick talking about as he, he's swatting flies in there. Tank swapping back and forth, making sure that car behind him doesn't run him over. But look, oh, he's watch, low. How much, watch more how much oh, rougher yeah. it is. Way rougher bouncing around Go inside clear. that car. Clear, clear, all clear, all clear. Yeah, definitely gives you that great contrast between three and four with that pretty wheel and just how much, how, how rough it is in one and two. And the lower you are, the rougher you are. So that was a really good good depiction of that. Well, I, I guess I spoke too soon. I was, I was talking about both those Toyotas breaking up the Hendrick camp. There's Bowman going around one of them. They're good on the long 
run. Hendrick is good on the long run. Bowman especially seems like he comes on later in the later in the stage. So, you know, meanwhile, Kyle Larson out front just kind of walking away. He's not way quicker than William Byron, but he's definitely got that gap. And as soon as he took the lead, he's just stuck with it. And he's he can run any lane he wants on the track. He doesn't have to worry about anybody. So my pick's looking good. Come track on, guys. position. I'm telling you, it's whoever beats him to the front. That's who's going to win this race if you're in one of those cars. Larson said this morning, he said, yeah, dirt track drivers on a track like this where you have to search around uh, for the right groove many times during the race, your dirt track background, that definitely, definitely plays into that. Man, if Kyle Larson wins the race, he was talking about coming home with me on the plane. I don't know, that might take a while. I'd say he's going to be driving. <laughs> he's going to miss that plane to be careful. I'll wait for my buddy. It'll be just fine. I had to wait many times while I was racing. So on that last pit stop exchange, William Byron was about two seconds behind Larson. Uh, Larson pitted one lap before Byron, and that has extended the gap. But their pit stop times and rolling times down pit road were identical, pretty much. You know, wow. within a couple of hundredths. So impressive, you know. That, that's, I mean, that's the stuff that you don't practice nearly as much as the laps on track. And uh, for that to be so close is just so impressive how elite everybody is at this level. All right, well, while you're stacking your chips, we're going to take a minute and do a Sunday NASCAR on Fox. Crank it up. There's a huge gap. 20 laps to go here in the Las Vegas desert. You're watching your aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, powering every mile and every moment on NASCAR's road to victory. Goodyear, more driven. When they came out of the pits, Kyle Larson was 2.8 seconds ahead of William Byron. You can see on our pylon, he's now increased that to just about four and a half seconds. With Denny Hamlin, the first Toyota in third, and Kevin Harvick, the first uh, Ford in eighth place. Harvick and Bubba Wallace have uh, had quite a battle here over these last 10 or so laps. We're going to Harvick's house next week. Phoenix. What an incredible record oh, he yeah. has had there. Comparable probably only to Richard Petty at Daytona, Daryl Waltrip at Bristol, Dan Gurney at Riverside, California on the road course. Harvick has truly dominated Phoenix throughout his career. Next week on Fox. A little bit of a different package going into Phoenix, too, which will make the race a little interesting. We'll see how that goes. Different aerodynamics, different downforce. And let's get an update on our leader with 18 to go, Regan. Mike, interesting conversation with Cliff Daniels this morning. Think back to a week ago at California when Kyle Larson had issues early on in the race. They found themselves laps down. He told me that that was actually an okay thing. No, you never want to have that happen, but it gave him an opportunity to work on some stuff, to try some things that maybe they typically wouldn't do in race, and also a dry run for the pit crew to get a lot of reps in. And he was quick to point out to me that while they were doing that last week, that car was very fast. Not sure that that has anything to do with this week, but 
potentially a problem last week did help out just a little bit down the road here. Well, perhaps so, but uh, Clint, as you and Danica said at the top of the telecast, the key to the season is the mile and a half tracks, and that makes this race so important as a measuring stick for where everybody is on the size tracks we go to most. Well, the problem is, is that you establish where you're at here at this mile and a half, and it isn't that you can improve, it's that everyone improves. So that delta is just so hard to fully close the gap on because all the way through the season, everybody's getting better, everybody's finding more, and it's just so much harder when you start off at a deficit. Well, let's go to the good news side. Here are the drivers who failed to finish both of the first two races and right in, through no fault of their own. Al Marola, uh, Wallace Priest getting caught up uh, in incidents and all of them are running today now with 15 laps to go. In fact, the only car out of the race uh, is Joey Logano, who crashed out at lap 183. Yeah, all those guys, you know, it's time. You got to start getting on a roll here. You cannot have too many of those strung out in a row. One bad finish takes a month to overcome. You start doing two of them, no stage points, everything else, you're talking months to get over. And the best of that group right now, Bubba Wallace in seventh, Eric Almirola in 15th. Then Priest one lap down, Briscoe two laps back. I want to give a quick shout out to the Harlan drivers. Just get this, 2,384 miles from Charlotte to Auto Club Speedway in Fontana. Back to Charlotte, another 2,000 miles. Back to Charlotte to Vegas. Some of these, not all of them are doing this, but another 2,245 miles. 2,100 to Charlotte next weekend. Back to Charlotte, 13,458 miles to make sure this show happens. Them hey, boys put in the work. They're not the only, the drivers aren't the only ones that like to drive. Let me tell you, <laughs> them cats are digging. And those haulers were all beautifully polished and lined up down by the airport for the hauler parade up the Las Vegas trip here Thursday. Tonight. I guarantee you they Great didn't show. look as good as their haulers are driving. <laughs> That's a long road to hoe there. 12 to go. Larson three and a half in front of Byron. The two Hendrick Chevys leading Denny Hamlin's Toyota. Larry Mack. You know, what these crew chiefs have to be thinking, Mike, is what if the caution comes out? We normally don't get a late race caution here at Las Vegas, but I will say this, in the last six spring races, twice we got a caution in the final five laps, including that overtime finish last year. So people like Cliff Daniels you saw right there, what do I do if this yellow flag comes out? Uh, always thinking, you bet. Four tires. <laughs> You know, of all the drivers that have uh, struggled and redeemed, uh, probably Ryan Blaney has done the best job of that. He is uh, up to eighth place, restarted 11th uh, last time out. He is now the, the first forward in the race. He has passed Kevin Harvick, worked his way back up to eighth spot, so uh, first in class for Blaney. Mike, that's a great point. He struggled early in the race. You could hear him on the radio. He wasn't happy. Vibration, what was it? Still has the vibration, but obviously it's not terminal, so he's up to eight. That's a good day for them. Grinding it out, yep. never giving yep. up. You cannot he's... give up long race. You never know what's going to happen. This is what makes a championship, right? It's when you make the most of the days that aren't ideal, and you can still come away with good points. Another driver who uh, has done well here, Austin Sindrick, got the free pass at lap 183, and that put him to 22nd. He has since raced his way uh, up to 14th. Give it a little thanks out the window with his hand. 19 cars on the lead lap right now as Corey LeJoy goes a lap down. So Eric Jones is the last of those. Lead lap cars with nine to go. Nine to go, and it just takes me back to what you heard Larry talk about. Yes, these cars are spread out around the racetrack, right? Easy peasy, one lapper at a time if you're the leaders. Take your time. No, you know, pushing, but I look up out of the window. Here's Reddick Rim riding right on the fence. If you're Cliff Daniels, you do not want to see that guy. Get back down. Do not do anything to have that guy pull that caution flag out. It can change this race in a hurry. Hang on, he's low. Look at that. Look at that low making, making a move. But yeah, he's been running up there all day. Maybe he was just tricking everybody. He's like, hey, come on up here. Justin Haley is going to get a top 20 finish out of uh, this day. 16th place right now.
ran as high as fourth when uh, they tried to run out a fuel run after after leaders had pitted hoping for a caution that didn't come and Corey LaJoy uh, LaJoy got the free pass back at lap 165 to get back on the lead lap and uh, has just gone a lap down he uh, if he stays in this spot he has top 20 finishes for all three races to start the season pretty good start for him yes punching above his weight a lot of guys all over the place you know you look at three Austin Dillon back there two laps down he is nowhere to be seen he has a lot of work to do we talked about SHR Camp Briscoe, his teammate Priest. They're struggling a little bit. Almirola's in 15th. Harvick's cracking the top 10 barely. Just thinking about manufacturers, organizations. Some of them got a lot of work to do. Some of them are very happy with where they're at so far. I'm interested to see what Truex does with this run. He got by Alex Bowman. He's quite a few tenths quicker right now. He's pulled a huge gap on Alex. He's pulling. He's getting closer and closer to Denny. I wonder what he's got for him. Well, he's caught him. Just like you said, you're going to have to, you're catching Gregson here. Set him up. Use this lapper as a pick. You know Denny's going to get wide here. Start working that mirror. It's another, it's one thing to catch a car, and it's another thing to pass oh, a car. Hey, car in the wall off the floor. Oh, my gosh. Caution is out. It's Eric Almirola. Watch Ooh, this, Larry. <laughs> and Larry, this changes everything. <laughs> These guys this is heads. why I'm follically challenged after yes. <laughs> 18 years, Mike. <laughs> All right, you asked, Larry. I'm putting you on the spot, Cowboy. What are you doing? Caution's out. I'm leading this race. It's going to be an overtime finish, Clint. Oh, Al there you see Almirola just getting loose. And two tires is what won this race a year ago for an overtime finish with about the same amount of laps that we have on our tires right now. There's there's going to be guys back in the field that go with just right side tires. I think that's a good gamble. I think uh, Denny made it work. He stayed out front for a while. He didn't keep the lead, but I think two tires with just a few laps to go is a great, great call. The key is, is being offset. How many cars take two? You're to your four. And do you think it's just going to be one caution? <laughs> Green, white, checkered. You know it's going to happen. I don't want two tires, Clint. I got 30 laps on my tires. I want four tires to drive right by him. Depends on where I'm at. I okay. want the tires. I agree, but I want track position. If I'm if, if I'm here to gamble and I'm here to win the race, you're not going to do it from fourth or fifth, you're going to have to do something to differentiate yourself and get ahead of that five car. Well, let's hear what some of the teams are thinking, beginning with William Byron's. A lot of wrecks to stay out, you know, and then we go where we can do what we did last year. Yeah, I like last year, but that's me. Or you just stay out, huh? Well, there's that. That is a, doing nothing is, is a choice. Is that what you do, Clint? Right? Is that what you do if you were in the car? Would you be Would you be calling for that? Man, it's early in the year. It's time <laughs> to gamble. You are, again, this is this race is won in the spring and the fall race by a gamble, taking a chance and having that driver hold on to that thing and make the most out of this restart. Last year. Last year, the Gibbs cars had the race won, and yes. they came in and got four tires. The Hendrick Motorsports drivers did two, and they won this race. Larry Max Wright, two tires. You know what I'm glad of? I don't have to make that decision. <laughs> you know what I'm glad of? I hate to say this, Kyle, but I'm glad it happened. This is going to get interesting. Jeez. Oh, this is just like yesterday's Xfinity race. It was not the most exciting that race kid's ready. until right at the end. And then they had a side-by-side -side battle for the checkered flag. Austin Hill ended up... Uh, the winner, Justin Allgaier second. Austin Hill Chandler Smith battled for the win, and uh, Smith ended up third. Well, Kyle Larson was running away with it. I know this is definitely not what he wanted to see, but look, he's aggressive, and if you got to put your money on somebody, I'm saying Kyle's keeping his foot down. So you're the leader. Do you pit? Yeah. What do you get? Two. Clint? <laughs> well, you know that the 24 is thinking about staying out. This, hey, man, it's But from second, decision. is that really a this gamble? This is why if you think you had this race figured out and change a channel, you better be listening. <laughs> Get it changed back because business is picking up. Hey, Pitts. It's going to be two. Oh, and Truex stays out. Regan. 
Mike going into turn three. That's when Cliff Daniels made the call. We are pitting. Very calm, cool, and collected with that race car. Kyle has been silent. He doesn't say a word on the radio that run or the run before that. And the 11 of Danley, Denny Hamlin, too tight with that race car right now. Just needed a little bit for that. Two tires for Kyle Larson, Jamie. Well, it was a two-tire stop in this very similar situation a year ago in the 48 won the race. You saw him just come in. The 24 of William Byron is in as well. It's going to be Good close. stops, Mike. And at the line, 24. it was Byron. Oh. I thought I saw that five car having a little bit of a slow stop on them right sides. I was right. Willie B to the front. Was that, was that fuel only for Byron? Look how close this is. You called it, Clint. You saw him coming down pit road. I you looked over at me and you said that was slow. Yep. They hung up with just the least little bit on that five car right side. William Byron's team beat him out. It's a team effort. It's not over, though. Now you've got Truex out front, no tires, slipping and sliding all over the place. He's not going to have a lot of help. These boys are going to be pouncing on him. So the only I think that's lead lap problem. Car, the, go ahead, Larry. It, yeah, that's going to be the problem. He's on an island by himself. 40-something <laughs> laps on the tires. He's the only one that stayed out. Okay. The only other driver who will restart on the lead lap um, that did not stop Eric Jones, who is the free pass car. Here's the Kyle Larson stop for right side tires. I, like, again, I just noticed it just looked the least little bit slow. It wasn't like a big hang up, like just something glaring pointed out, but obviously it was 24 car beat him out. Not what you want. Very frustrating if you're a driver in that situation, but hey. Yeah, it's but he won the sport. championship that way too. He gave credit that year. He's like, the crew, the crew got me out first, so you win them together, you lose them together. So Martin Truex's crew chief, James Small, started off the week jumping out of a plane. Here he is with a no pit stop gamble to try to win this one. We listened in. Just clean them up as good as you can. Copy that. And they're going to make it through laps. Make it as it can be. Yeah, we'll see about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a hard thing. As a crew chief, you got to try to pump him up. You know what I mean? You have to try to tell him, do everything you could do. And as a driver, you know you're a sitting duck. But you're going to go out there. You're going to get them elbows up, block as much as you possibly can. Mirror drive. Make that thing wide, just like you said. So here are the rules for overtime. It is a two-lap shootout, green-white checker. And if the leader comes back to the line for the white flag under the green flag, then the next flag will decide the race. You know, one thing that he possibly could use to his advantage is that extension of the restart zone being longer. Yeah. That that benefits the driver. And if he if he does the right move, catches that guy off guard in this mirror, maybe he can get that jump and not have them breathing down his neck getting in a one. If I'm him, I'm carrying a lot of speed because look, he's gonna wheel spin probably a little bit easier. Tires aren't new. I'm gonna carry as much speed as I can and get going. Toughest thing with that is they know that, right? So how do you try to juke them out if you will catch them off guard. All right, let's choose. The leader has chosen the inside all day, and Truex will continue that tradition. Byron up to the outside of the front row. Larson right behind Truex. Remember, this track is a good five cars wide, and there is no out of bounds. I'm telling you, this is anybody's game. You, you think that that 24 car is in a catbird seat because that guy is a deficit on the inside. All it takes is him to slide up the five, get in the back of him, try to put him three wide. He slides up in the 24. That could open the game up for a Bowman, somebody the Chastain from the third row. This is anybody's Man. game in this situation. Row two, row three, super aggressive. I think this is going to be probably not so good for he Trek. feels just about as as, as as his guts hurting just like when he stepped out of that airplane it was perfectly running fine i'm glad he made the call this is entertaining yeah he's all in <laughs> you know that's jumping about. out of planes and not pitting with a couple to go buddy Love it. this is putting it all on on black right here we're going for it well you saw the las vegas strip it's about 15 miles from here to the south and we're ready for overtime, sponsored by Credit One Bank. Green, white, checker, let's hope. If you're Larson, you have to go as soon as you get there, but you know if he gets a big time block from Truex, which he will, that it can open the door up for a three wide with Bowman. 
Now NASCAR in the driver's meeting told the drivers keep it up tight and make good decisions on these restarts. Bowman lagging back just a little bit. He's on the button now and here we go. Stacked up on the outside. Bowman's told you he went to that outside middle. Still hanging quarter. Here comes William Byron. Still hanging quarter now door. Even you to 24, three off the two wide here. Where Four wide middle? off the corner behind the leaders. Truex side draft him back. He's going to have to get there. He just had to lift too much. That tire deficit, William Byron to the lead. Look at this run. They're all going to get on Truex now. Lift and right in the middle of three and four. Worst corner you could do it in. White flag gets official. I'm telling you, Bowman's in a really good situation here. Four wide for seven. Excuse me, Byron. And a big run for Bowman on the outside. They're going to split Truex, and it's three Hendrick Chevys to the front. Just like much of the day, around goes Almendinger, back of the pack, four or five cars spinning. We stay green as everybody gets out of the throttle. Here they come to the flag. Ooh. William Byron will lead his 175th lap of the day and take the checkered flag in Las Vegas. Unbelievable. Heartbreak for the Kyle Larson gang. I'm telling you, that 24 won both stages, was a fast car early in the day, got an opportunity and made the most of it. Didn't see that coming, Danica. Fun way to end. Fifth career win for Byron in his 183rd start. Last April at Martinsville, the last time he'd been to victory lane. First three cars are basically who was first first three cars the entire day today. So it was pretty representative of the race today. And honestly, I said it earlier. It was going to come down to whoever was in front at the end, and that's who won the race. Look at Bubba Wallace, fourth place. Awesome day for him. Any one of those three could have won. It was his day. How about Austin Centric for uh, sixth? That's pretty good. Restarted ninth, Sindrick up for sixth. Christopher Bell restarted tenth, finished fifth. Hamlin. Bubba Wallace, thirteenth, finished fourth. Hamlin's the one that really lost on that deal. Didn't even finish in the top ten. And Truex, who was the leader at the restart, crosses the line seventh. Burning it down. <laughs> I cannot believe what I just saw. <laughs> Did not see that caution coming out whatsoever. Neither did that guy. Man, Kyle's going to be so bummed. Heart broke. Oh, so close. It was in his reach. Two to go. Oh, man. Charlotte, North Carolina's William Byron started playing racing on computer games. Told his dad, I'd like to give this a try. They went legends car racing on Tuesday nights at Charlotte, then late models. Worked quickly through the truck series, the Xfinity series, and Rick Hendrick put him in a cup car. And here he is in victory lane for the fifth time. Hard to imagine that dream really started on a computer yeah. racing simulation. That's true. That's just a product of this day and age, right? There's so much more computer games and there's so much more <laughs> realistic, but yeah, I that's, guess. A, that's an interesting transition <laughs> to yes, go from using your fingers on a, on a, on a remote to uh, driving the actual car. And it is the third one, two, three finish for Hendrick Motorsports in the Cup Series. Jamie Little. William Byron absolutely dominated the day, swept the stages, gets the win. I know a lot of people look at this first mile and a half track to look forward to the rest of the season. What did that performance say to you, this team, and your fans? Yeah, just been really confident about it. the group of guys that I have on this 24 team. Uh, they work extremely hard, and we spent a lot of time in the offseason just going through, you know, running at the, the sim with Chevy and, and running on iRacing and just uh, trying to get better as a race car driver and as a team. So uh, it's all about the team. So it's a great pit crew. Uh, thinking of Chase back home. Wish he was out here with us. Um, you know, he's a great race car driver, great teammate. So uh, wish he was out here, but uh, thankful to Mr. H, Jeff Gordon. I know he's watching, and 
uh, this RaptorTough.com Chevy was was awesome. I mean, honestly, when we got back in traffic, it was a little bit tight, but uh, we knew we we knew we had speed, so we just had to have the right things play out. And, and Rudy made a good call, so it was good. Great battle with your teammate Kyle Larson. Then you guys decide to come down and pit. You mentioned your pit crew; they were lights out all day. What do you have to say about them and that call to come down and take two? Yeah, honestly, uh, the one pit stop that they had that that we lost the lead, uh, I slid through the box or slid long, and uh, that delays the stop. So that was on me, and I knew they could get it done at the end. And Rudy's been under the weather all day. He's got the you know stomach bugs. So he's been really quiet on the radio, but uh, luckily it worked out there. And uh, just thanks to all the fans for coming out. Uh, always love racing at Vegas, how you move around, and excited for the year. All right, William Byron, your winner in Las Vegas. Had the best car all day, led 176 laps of this race. Regan? Well, Kyle, Kyle Larson, William Byron's teammate, comes home second today. Looked like you had this thing pretty much in hand and under control. What were the thoughts when that caution came out with two laps to go? Damn. <laughs> but, uh, it's just, I mean, it's just part of, you know, cup racing. It seems like uh, count laps down, lap by lap, and then sure enough, the uh, yellow lights come on. So, um, yeah, I mean, you just got to get over that and then try to execute a good pit stop. And I thought I did a really good job. You know, getting to my sign and getting to the commitment line, I had a gap you know, to William behind me, and um, their pit crew must have just did a really good job and, and got him out in front of us, and that uh, gave up the front row to us. So I knew I was in trouble um, with the 19 being on, you know, staying out. Um, I felt like you know, William was going to get by him, and um, so yeah, just a uh, bummer that it, we didn't uh, end up the winner. But you know, all in all, William probably had a little bit better car than I had today, and um, you know, their pit crew executed when they needed to there at the end. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Regan. Six tenths of a second better was Byron's uh, pit stop. Here's a look at the restart. Uh, Byron out front because of that quicker pit stop. Martin Truex did not stop and was good for a lap, but the Hendrick cars were better. Absolutely. I tell you, you heard me say it. Look at Denny. He's the one that really, I can't believe he started on that second row and ended up outside of the top 10. It just shows you green, white, checkered. If your car doesn't take off, you get put three wide early. Yeah. Lose that momentum, it's over. Alex Bowman popping to the middle going into one, I think probably hurt Kyle Larson being yeah. able to get momentum and be able to have more lanes to use. And he was just pinned to the bottom and didn't have any options. Hurt them both, I agree. Now here's what happened on the last lap. A.J. Allmendinger goes around, he gets Pile driven by Ryan Priest. McDowell spins, Eric Jones, Brad Keselowski. A bunch of them were in it, but everybody involved climbed out of their cars and is okay. William Byron, the winner in Las Vegas. Motorsports driver number 24, William Byron, 25 years old from Charlotte, North Carolina. Check out the big hat. Oh, the hat. You can, I mean, look listen, when you win a race like you did today, William Byron, you can wear whatever the heck you want to wear in victory lane. Check out all the confetti. 176 laps led for William Byron, his fifth career win, sweeping the stages. What a day for him. And listen, I know it all came down to the pit stop as we come into the race day studios. Shannon Spake, Larry McReynolds, Jamie McMurray, but William Byron had the fastest car on the day. I mean, he dominated this race. I feel like the, the right car won the race. Yeah, I, I mean, there's a lot that goes into leading 176 yes. of 267 laps. Yeah, the pit crew there at the end, that overtime finish, that stop for two right side tires, six tenths of a second quicker than Kyle Larson's crew. But the biggest thing, go back to last year. William Byron won two of the first eight races. The rest of the year, only one top five finish. But boy, he made a statement today. He sure did. Yeah, I mean, fastest car won the race today. It's it seemed like Kyle Larson was in the right place to be able to win. Obviously, the caution coming out at the end uh, cost him. You know, Truex staying out, though, to me, that messed, that killed Kyle Larson's chances of being able to win because he had the lineup behind Truex. It would have been fun to watch Kyle Larson try to battle again for a win <laughs> on a green-white checkered with a teammate to see if he could come out on top. It was so awesome to hear Kyle Larson when Regan asked him. He's a him, damn. Like, he's a yeah. damn. That's what I thought when the caution yeah, came out. Uh, let's go back to the track. Alex Bowman is standing by with Jamie Little. 
Well, last, last year's winner, Alex Bowman, Bowman brings it home third. third. Take, Take us through that, that last restart. Looked like you may have had a chance there. Yeah, yeah for, for sure. sure. I think I got, I got us too tight in stage three and just try to be really aggressive and make up for it there in that last restart. And um, yeah, had a shot at it. Just a couple rows too far back to start. But uh, really proud of Hendrick Motorsports to be one, two, three is really awesome. Our ally Camaro was really good, especially stage two. Just uh, asked for the wrong adjustments probably. So um, just excited with the way the year started. And uh, hopefully we keep the momentum rolling next week at Phoenix. Right, Alex Bowman goes to his home track in Phoenix next week. Thank you so much, Jamie. Listen, we're used to Hendrick Motorsports having great days and great races. One, two, three finish. It's the first time it's happened since Dover 2021, however, when they finished top four. This is a huge statement for this organization. Yeah, and I, I mean, I, I want to focus on Alex Bowman specifically. It, it's three top tens in a row. Uh, he and Blake Harris have, have meshed together seamlessly. I mean, yeah. he, he mentioned that maybe he asked for the wrong adjustments, but they've had speed every single week at, at a lot of different types of racetracks. Uh, I mentioned him in our pre-race show. I think he's the guy to look out for. I think he's going to have a breakout year this year. James Small, uh, he, that's the reason you're follically challenged. However, Blake Harris on the other <laughs> side, you said follically challenged on here, didn't you? I did, because 18 years, that's why I am follically challenged. <laughs> Great use of the adverb there. Uh, let's go back out to the track. Uh, we've got Regan Smith, who's standing by with Bubba Wallace. Bubba Wallace hung around the top 10 all day long, right there just outside the top five at times. That last restart, things went your way and uh, ended up with a good top five run. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Uh, I love coming here to Vegas. Uh, I really thought we had a much better car than what we had in the race from practice. Uh, just couldn't get the front end to work for, for whatever reason. We tried everything, going the other way on air, going the opposite way on air, and just could never figure it out. So we got a lot of work to do uh, for a mile and a half stuff. But all in all, solid day. Happy for our Columbia Toyota Camry TRD team. Um, Never, never stop fighting. You know, you never give up. I almost come to the radio. I was like, hey, good job. You know, you finished sixth. And the coach came out, and I'm like, perked up again and got some. Thanks, Bubba. Thank Love that smile on the face, right? When you get a top five finish, that's exactly how you're going to be looking after the race. Well, just still out there on the racetrack with a checkered flag was a big plus for Bubba Wallace in that 23 car because, remember, the first two races this year, two DNS. But I'm not surprised. When you look at how dominant he was in that Kansas win last fall, he was really good at Vegas in the fall to the thing with a miss with he and Kyle Larson. But they needed that. They needed to finish the race, and that's actually his first top five since that Kansas win. What about rounding out the top five, Christopher Bell? was in that spot, and he's with Regan Smith. Well, it was a working man's top five for Christopher Bell today. You guys really battled with that car at different times. At one point, I had a note 10 out of 10 tight. Vibrating wheel at one point during the race. Still get out of here with a top five. Yeah, I mean, honestly, the finish of that ended up about as good as we could have asked for with the Sirius XM Camry. And I, I don't know, really up and down strange day for us because we took off and I felt extremely good and, and drove right to whatever it was, top five. And um, I didn't feel like I had anything for uh, the, the hinder cars, but we seemed like we were kind of best of the rest and then uh, lost the handle on it. Thanks, Christopher. I mean, you got to be happy with the top five when you lost the handle on the yeah, car. Yeah, right? that's a frustrating day. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, uh, it wasn't a frustrating day for William Byron, however. Congratulations to the Las Vegas winner getting it done out there. I think he might keep that beard for a little while longer. Winning with it, might keep it. We'll be right back. The stars and stripes are flying high as the USA takes on the world's best. The World Baseball Classic. Great Britain, the United States, Saturday, 9 p.m. Eastern on Fox. Six different winners in the last six Las Vegas races, but today was all about that 24 car. William Byron burning it down. Look at that. That looks like fun, right? And just get out there. Since he got to do that. You don't want all that wind when you're doing a burn. There you go. Uh, let's go up to the booth and hear from the folks who called the race. Mike, Clint, and Danica, it's all yours. William Byron started outside pole next to Joey Logano in the 400 miler at Las Vegas. And for most of the race, it looked like nobody could come near him and nobody could touch him. Well, nobody that is except his teammate, Kyle Larson. Well, finally got that lead. You see the five car got to take off, you know, set sail when he's in the lead. Wasn't for long. Well, it was for a long time. <laughs> Seemed like a long time. <laughs> Caution comes out. Oh, my God. Setting up that green, white checkered finish. Oh, when I, I looked up see. and saw that 10 car in the wall, I was like, 
I kind of want to see this. <laughs> I know as a fan, but I know that Kyle Larson didn't want to see it. And what? Of course a chain he didn't. of events. No, that no, he definitely lost the win. But as he said, William Byron, Byron was probably the stronger car. He'd won two stages. Um, still obviously slipped through his fingers. But look at Toyota. I mean, Bubba Wallace finished fourth. And Hamlin and Truex were up in the mix for a significant part of it. And they weren't super fast in practice. So made it interesting. And that was interesting among the Gibbs cars because on that final restart or that final caution flag, they had divergent strategies. Uh, Martin Truex did not stop, so he was the leader on the restart. Hamlin stopped and got tires, but neither of those plans worked out. Well, we're in Las Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> Throw them dice down the table, see what happens, and that's what they did. James Small went for it. He started the weekend jumping out of a plane, gambling on his life, and he ended gambling on that racetrack. Went for it. That's what it takes in Sin City. Didn't work out for them, but it did for Hendrick Motorsports. So in the end, an exciting finish uh, to a race that did not have a lot of lead changes going all the way through, and Chevrolet gets its third win to start the season for the first time since 2010. And oh, by the way, the fastest and best car won. Congratulations, William Byron. Thank you so much, Mike. We'll see you in Phoenix. Let's take a look. Those guys just mentioned the final restart. Of course, Martin Truex Jr. out front because he stayed out. But, Jamie, you said, man, I don't want to be behind him on this restart, right? Well, he, I thought he did an exceptional job not spinning his tires, and he hung on as good as he could. Obviously, when they got to turn three, the tires uh, of William Byron were able to overcome what he had. But great job by Martin Truex. We could tell when he had his interview, <laughs> uh, uh, when they, you know, prior to the restart, he wasn't very optimistic <laughs> about the group. He was like, well, we'll kind of see what happens. What do you think? What do you think was going on here, Blair Back? Yeah, I mean, it, he was the only one that stayed out. Yeah. That, that was the issue. He was on an island absolutely by needed, himself. Needed two or three. Needed, needed a some allies buffer. out there, yeah. absolutely. Let's hear from Martin Truex Jr. Why don't we? Jamie Little caught up with him. Martin, Martin Truex Jr. Jr. Brings, brings it home, home seventh. seventh. You guys made it exciting there. You opted just to stay out. Did you feel like you had a chance with these guys that took two? Yeah, I wasn't sure. I mean, you never know. You get, you know, if you can somehow get a good restart, get to the white flag and they crash, you go win the thing. It almost happened. We were second at the white. We were second into turn one on the last lap and just got tight and got in a bad spot off two and, um, you know, lost momentum down the back. But, you know, all in all, it was a, a solid day for our, our best pro shops, Camry, TRD, and uh, everybody did a good job. So, uh, you know, could never quite get it where we needed. I think we were about a third place car, maybe fourth, and um, you know, just a good solid day. So we're in, get, we're in Vegas. We might as well roll the dice, and uh, you know, like like everybody says, come here to gamble. It's proud of James for that. You know, last year we didn't, and it bit us. So um, yeah, we gave up a few spots, but all in all, it was a solid day. Thanks. Decision to stay out, Larry Mack. Harder on the driver, harder on the crew chief. Yeah, I, I mean, it's hard on everybody <laughs> yeah. with that 19 car. Again, I applaud someone trying something because it was one of those days, you've heard me say it, if you follow the leader, you're going to follow <laughs> the leader. I'm just before. not sure Never I would have stayed before. out. I think I would have <laughs> came in there at least got those two tires to have a little bit of a chance. But there weren't many comers and goers in today's race, but if you follow the leader, you follow the leader. Uh, there right? was a lot of goers. Hendrick Motorsports <laughs> they led were, all but 30 laps. They were going. <laughs> hey, don't forget, we got NASCAR race up weeknights at 6 Eastern on FS1. Daniel Suarez is going to be on the show tomorrow. He had a top 10 finish. Next Sunday, we got the NHRA Gator Nationals on Fox. Noon Eastern, race day from Phoenix. Coverage begins at 2 Eastern on FS1 and then continues over on Fox at 3. Tonight on Fox, we got Next Level Chef. Up next, The Simpsons, The Great North, Bob's Burgers, and Family Guy. Hang out here on Fox for the rest of the night. Congratulations to our winner, William Byron. Hey, everyone, we'll see you at Phoenix next week. has changed over our 75 years but the thing that never does the anticipation the holding of breath until that first green flag drops and the crazy journey begins all over again if you could travel 75 years from now you might not recognize much at all but one thing will never change that feeling you get when the race begins again